Take me back to the place I know With the mystery shack and the forest gnomes I'm already back, so come on, let's go Don't get me started, my heart's in gravity falls Welcome to Mystery Shack Look Back, a nostalgic time capsule and no-spoiler book club of the original Gravity Falls fandom. We are your curators. I'm Shelby. I'm Charlie. And I'm Ella. Legally now, as of yesterday, uh, well, June 27th, for those listening now, uh, yeah. That is so cool. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, and uh, I don't, do we have anything else cool going on today? Uh, yeah, we actually have one of our final docent graduations, I guess. <laughs> oh, really? Well, well, who's who's returning? Well, uh, do you remember who guessed it in our Society of the Blind Eye episode? Oh, yeah. What We got actually, like, the biggest Gravity Falls fan in the world, I think. But can you imagine, as a fan of Gravity Falls, how exciting it was for me to figure out that I was Dipper? <laughs> um, wow, yeah, uh... Which episode was it that you pieced together that that was your voice? It was about, I think it's like uh, Time Traveler's Pig, I think. It took me that long. Oh, wow. Oh, that's right. C- J- Jason Ritter. Yeah, the voice of Dipper. And and he's back today. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks Jason, for having me. have you ever been a docent of an imaginary museum before? <sighs> Define docent, because actually I don't know what We've it is. We've gotten that <laughs> question many times before. <laughs> a docent is a term used in America to, to describe a volunteer tour guide at a museum. Because, Jason, your first appearance, we were giving you a tour, but... You've been on a tour. You know the lay of the land. You know the layout of our museum perfectly, probably, I guess. Certainly do. Yes, I do. So we like to do a little ceremony here to to, to, to coronate you, to graduate you into the docent of Mystery Shack Lookback, Jason. Oh, thank you. I'm excited. If you could lift your right hand in the air and place your left hand on this copy of Journal 3. Please repeat after me. I state your name. I state your name. That's the classic joke. I, Jason. It is. <laughs> do solemnly swear to uphold. Do solemnly swear to uphold. The duties of a Mystery Shack look back docent. The duties of a Mystery Shack look back docent. To preserve the history. To preserve the history. And protect the mystery. And protect the mystery. Of the Gravity Falls fandom. Of the Gravity Falls fandom. I promise to lock myself in the Hall of Conspiracies overnight. I promise to lock myself in the Hall of Conspiracies overnight. So that when the conspiracies inevitably come to life. So that when the conspiracies inevitably come to life. We can go on fun-filled Ben Stillarian adventures together. We can go on fun-filled Ben Stellarian adventures together. And I promise... And I promise... To force Alex Hirsch to improvise a best man style speech about my graduation to Docent. <laughs> to force Alex Hirsch to improvise a, a, a speech uh, about my docentness. Perfect. <laughs> Webster's Dictionary defines Jason Ritter as uh, the most Jason-like of the Ritter's and we always knew that one day he would be on an imaginary uh, podcast uh, situation, and I'm very proud of him. And Jason, I just want to pinch your cute little cheeks. You're a mensch and a hero, and I love you. I love you, too. End scene. Well, that was a beautiful speech. We appreciate <laughs> the use of the word mensch. I feel like there's a lot of menches here today. I'm just going to be dropping the word mensch left and right. This is a bilingual podcast. To listen to this episode, you have to know both about Gravity Falls and Yiddish. <laughs> It's true. My actual grandpa Stan, who Grunkle Stan was partially inspired by, I feel like he only had two words, and they were mensch or schmuck, and that was how he saw the world. So I think I think you're all menches here. That's the the moral binary in this world. Really. Speaking of I mean, sh- speaking really of which, are, down. are we allowed to curse on this podcast? And if we do, is it Yiddish? We will censor it, but uh, no, I don't think any of our listeners speak Yiddish. If you want to throw in a few fakakt words, no, nah, we won't. We're not going to censor the Yiddish, but we do have a very fun censor noise, that being Seuss's, uh, yeah, yeah! Which is actually your voice, Alex. <laughs> oh, okay, so if I feel a swear coming on, I go, yeah, yeah, like that, and I just <laughs> preemptively... Oh, yeah, yeah, wait, you can do it yourself! It's your you voice! You censor yourself! I'll try, to catch, I'll try to catch myself. Live bleep! Yeah, well, welcome to the podcast, Alex Hirsch, uh, voice of Grunkle Stan, Bill Cipher, Old Man McGucket Seuss, creator of Gravity Falls itself, uh... 
Not, thanks for coming by. It's uh, it's an honor to have you. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. You forgot my most important role, a uh, Shmebulok. Oh, Shmebulok! Uh, okay, well, I also forgot about Sir Lord Quentin Tremblay the Third Esquire. Uh, my mistake. Um, <laughs> and, and, and let's not forget Dippy Fresh. Boo! <laughs> oh, no, yeah, that's a sore spot for Jason. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jason. I forgot that's a sore spot for you. The, the tiny piece of lore behind the Dippy Fresh voice is um that's my impression of the Disney promo announcer who <laughs> announces the show cuz Disney it, they yeah. would have these they would have these promos where they would talk so fast that it, you couldn't even hear what they're saying Dance break we'll be right back with Gravity Falls on Disney XD Yes yeah. so many questions Yeah that's the classic <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the one I remember that, that we would always make fun of back when I was like on fish hooks, it was like they would talk so fast and they would say something incomprehensible. So it would be like, Disney Channel Tuesday, Thursdays, only on Wednesday. It's got to be Fridays at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock yesterday. And you're like, wait, wait, say that again? And we were always doing like around the office impressions of how baffling like their attempt to describe this was. So that that voice was kicking around. Um, and so like when we were in like the you know writer's room pitching Dippy Fresh, it was always um, – my favorite joke um, that Michael Rianda made on that episode was um, we would come to them with all these amazing advertising things and they'd be like, nah, nah, we got January, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, dog, we got January. Get ready for Monstober. It's a portmanteau. Yeah, yeah it's uh, the worst. What about, what about um, Freaky, Freaky Freakend? Freakend? Oh, yep. yeah. Who could, for, who could forget Freaky Who could I remember forget Freaky Freakend? At Cartoon Network on Flapjack. They had a, a blog har, har program Thursdays. called Har Har Thursdays. Yep, yep. Yeah, and they they made fun of it on the show. <laughs> there was a joke where they got the voice of Captain Knuckles to say in response to something Flapjack said in an episode. Har Har Thursday. Like he just <laughs> they just threw it in there as a giant f you to the channel. I gotta ask to both uh, Jason and Alex because um you know there were several episodes already in production before the first episode aired, so. What was it like theorizing on whether you would develop a fan base at all and then actually seeing the extent to which that came to fruition? That first year, you know, Gravity Falls had been – or I don't know exactly when it was – I don't know how many episodes it aired the first time I went to a convention with the Dipper hat on. But there was a – there I saw like a Wendy and a Robbie and I went, oh, hey! Oh, my God. <laughs> and I was like, oh. And like, <laughs> the Wendy gave me kind of like a – cool like oh hey what's up like recognize the hat and robbie just leveled me with a, like the most robbie look like why oh, are you so talking to that's perfect, that's oh, perfect. That's my... he's like 20 years <laughs> older than we are <laughs> <laughs> met the real character. Yeah, really yeah, that's like... true. If if people didn't recognize you as the voice actor, you just seemed like a crazy person. <laughs> that was accidental method acting for, for you to get like dissed by Robbie is like perfect for your research for the role. Yeah, it was real. It really was. That was a rehearsal. I definitely used that in all the uh, subsequent episodes. <laughs> An actor prepares <laughs> exactly. All right, I just have to channel how I felt when that when that Robbie cosplayer blew how, me up. How old was this cosplayer, Jason? Was he teenage? I, he was, I bet they were like, they were probably, yeah, like, I would say 18, 19, 20, 21, early 20s, I would probably. College age. College age, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Young enough to still have some of that teen judgment. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember teen judgment. I used to care so much what other people were doing. No, I can't remember how that feels anymore. That, that's, a, um, that's a good arc for all presidents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. care when people are doing things that negatively impact other people, but well, it's weird because I hadn't had that feeling uh, since high school. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't put myself mm. around people who could make me feel like that. But in that moment where I saw, hey, we're both fans of the same show, I had a moment of unbridled sort of excitement that your inner nerd <laughs> oh, came made back. me vulnerable to like a. Chill out, kind of. Uh, I love that you're still using the word fan. <laughs> yeah. Well, at that point, I, I, you know, I wasn't like, hey, I do the. I was like, oh, you like the show that I like, and and part of, but that's right. You didn't think to this. you weren't like you didn't try to pull rank on them. You were just like, hey, I also like this thing that you like. Yeah, and, and you're dressed up, and I'm dressed that. up, and we know, like that thing in yeah. Comic Con when you're when it when you are dressed up as like a rare when you're from the same show. Yeah, like, it's oh, so good. Yeah, yeah, hey, you know, like it's just fun yes. to do that. 
Yes. Give a little to give a little bit of context. Like we had no, we had no idea that anybody outside the target demographic for the Disney Channel in the year 2012 would ever even hear the name of our show, let alone watch it, let alone care about mm-hmm. it, let alone discover the stuff that we had hidden in it. Like, like my first job working in television was for this cartoon show called Flapjack on Cartoon Network. Mm-hmm. And when f- episodes of Flapjack, you know, me and Pendleton Ward, we would write an episode of Flapjack together and then, you know, take all this time to be animated and recorded and mixed. And when it would air on television, it, there was no evidence yeah. that anyone well, had seen it's it. It's in like, the void now. Just yeah. Out there. <laughs> the fan culture as we know it now did, did not exist back mm-hmm. then. Um, yeah. I was like 18, 17 around the time that Flapjack aired. Didn't hear anyone my age talk about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. And so, like, like literally, when episodes would air, Thurup, who is the creator of Flapjack and the voice of Little Gideon, he <laughs> would he would go on to DeviantArt and he'd be like, "I saw a drawing," and like that would be like, "Oh, <laughs> people are watching." Oh, um, he was starring on little drawings. It's, <laughs> oh, it's that they they watched someone, one person watched, Aww, and that that's was so yeah. cute. That was the evidence that we had that anyone yeah. was even seeing it. So when. When Gravity Falls came out, I was expecting the same thing. I was expecting, you know, uh, the episode will air. I'll hear back what the ratings numbers are from the channel. And and maybe if I'm lucky, one or two people might, you know, do some fan art um, on, on DeviantArt. Or I didn't even know what Tumblr was yet. <laughs> um, so I, I was not prepared for any of it. I wasn't prepared for Tumblr either. <laughs> Is that um, what informed your, your, your dedication at first of like, I am going to save every piece of of fan mail because you didn't think you were going to get anywhere near the the, amount that you did. The first time I'd ever witnessed anything like this was um, when uh, Frederator had a really good website that was curating the fan response to Adventure Time, the first season that Adventure Time was airing. And they had this wonderful blog where they would post fan art and tattoos and costumes. And I remember looking at this blog just with a kind of a, a... disbelieving reverence of like if if one day a person like gets a tattoo of your drawing you've made Mm -hmm. it like Mm -hmm. and i remember seeing that i was like pen he has ascended to mount olympus my college buddy (laughs) here he is and so like in my like wildest dreams i was like maybe we'll have like a tenth of what was on that blog that one time you know yeah Um, but that was my only knowledge i actually feel that adventure time was a shift in fandom culture like as a whole because that's really where the change started Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, so we really were not we're not prepared in any way, shape, or form. Um and I mean I we weren't you know, I, I think I've mentioned this in other interviews before. When the first episode of Gravity Falls aired, we were almost we'd written much of the season at that point. Um not all mm. of it, but we had written much of it um in a total vacuum with no idea if anyone would ever care about any of this stuff. Um and you know, we were very tired. It was very demanding. Uh, mm-hmm. It was a, it was a an, an odd fit, the type of project we were trying to do and the, and the type of network we were trying to do it in. And so me and my creative director, Mike Rianda, who was a huge, huge part of the show and what made it so good, we're just going to listen to him in our Love God episode. I, I got to check that out. We were just exhausted. <laughs> and, and we were really thinking like we are we are dropping these bottled messages into the ocean and no, we're never going to get any messages back. And we mm. really weren't sure. I wasn't sure if I was going to do any more. I, I didn't know if it was going to be worth it. And it really mm-hmm. was episode one, two, three, four. I think four episodes had aired. Inconveniencing had just aired when we had our first Comic-Con. Um, and wow. the fact that we, we shared that panel with a few other Disney shows. And mm-hmm. and Gravity Falls was highly overrepresented in this panel in terms of the <laughs> fan turnout. And the amount of, and seeing the costumes in person, like, that's when it first started to feel like oh maybe anyone people... here for fish hooks yeah and they were, they were, <laughs> we were not, on that too there were, were there were less people there for clamantha than grunkle stan um I, I, was, I was ready to do the voice of either they're basically the same Aww. voice at a different pitch. i can either go false baritone or falsetto today let's see where, where where the events are going yeah grunkle stan is just like clamantha with a lot of hard living just like a lower version of the same horrible Cl- oh, <laughs> clamantha's yeah. had a rough couple of years since <laughs> after high school it was it was hard yeah. Um, but yeah, so we really, we were not prepared. Um, and I think part of that came from, you know, just 
what we all sort of take for granted now as this thing that comes along with a certain type of show for animated series was really, really not a thing yet at that time. So I yeah. just it, like yeah. Gravity Falls hit at the moment that Tumblr and fan culture all kind of hit at the same moment. I think that's part of why the fan um, bond is still so strong with this series is that like they all kind of came around at the right moment. They yeah, sort of I agree. wanted each other. Now that things are streaming all the time and, and com- you know, companies are, are kind of are banking on that kind of response now in a way i would say at least for some types of shows well, they did, yeah There's... and they didn't track it or value it at the time it's so funny because yeah. the response you know when when gravity falls was airing you know i i created a twitter account just because someone was pretending to be me and i wanted to like get rid of that so i created my own to like you got the underscore yeah exactly <laughs> that's why you know disney didn't have a twitter they didn't have any awareness of like <laughs> Oh, God. They were completely... Wait, they didn't have a Twitter oh in 2012? Gosh. No, absolutely wow. not. Disney Television didn't have a Twitter. Or if they did, it had like seven followers and they weren't tweeting. I had a Twitter in 2012 <laughs> just because I knew I was supposed to have one and I never touched it. Wow. They just, they, they had no, they were only measuring, these shows were for the... The s- Nielsen ratings. Y- yes, yeah. exactly. These ancient, it, dusty it, Nielsen it, ratings. The only thing that is relevant is how it ranked against the final episode of MASH. Well, <laughs> their metric for success was, you know, we're supposed to be the 6 to 12 year old audience. And the yeah. funny thing is, the most coveted demographic at that time among all television was like the male 18 to like 35 year old Breaking Bad uh... that was the audience that propelled big hits like yeah Breaking Bad or The Simpsons and we were getting those choice viewers but our metrics they didn't count them they're like that's not what we're here for so they yeah, were that's accidentally not the brand. Wow. And they weren't they weren't planning on they weren't planning on you know college age women which was a huge huge yeah. amount of yeah. our audience that's Tumblr um, that's me and Shelby yeah, watching this yeah. show the first time. <laughs> it's yeah. so many of the most passionate fans were not even tallied. So they didn't tally the social media response. They didn't tally the fan response. They didn't tally these additional. It was just what are seven to twelve year olds? Yeah, yeah. I, I was uh, eighteen or nineteen when I started watching the show, and um, you just didn't have cable. Did not think it was necessary to pay for both the internet and cable because I was savvy enough to find things if I needed to, and so. Uh, I watched the show for the first time purchasing the episodes on Amazon. Same, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then so we weren't being counted, yeah. My, my biggest hunch about Gravity Falls is this insane fan base in, in Mexico. For for some reason, ah. like, when I look at my metrics, ah. half of them are from Mexico. And my best hunch about it is that <laughs> Alonzo has a lot of friends. <laughs> maybe. Maybe it's it's Alonzo's family just playing it on repeat. <laughs> um, Aw. M- my hunch is that Gravity Falls was put on Latin Netflix, Season one. Okay. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. And it exploded on Latin Netflix, which again, you know, Disney didn't care. Nobody took Netflix seriously or thought it would one day be a rival to all these other media companies. So there was all these bells ringing that this was a big special thing, but they weren't the bells that Disney was focusing on. The bells Disney was focusing on were also ringing, but they didn't know that they, they didn't know that this was like expanding beyond their target. The first time I saw a dipper hat at Hot Topic was 2017. I'm like, okay, you're- No, that's exactly what I was going to say. You could have been just one year earlier. It seems like for- or as much as as the crew could did not anticipate the response, Disney did not anticipate it way, like only got on the ball uh, t- toward the end of it. I, I, I mean, I, I would say that uh, they always valued it and they always like were really excited by its success. And it was doing great for the ratings relative to what ratings were back when television existed. Um, but I don't think they understood the opportunity yeah. that existed yeah. with things like merchandise. I, and I, I think they really, because like I, when the show was running, I was trying to convince them to do like, you know, I, I pitched, let's do a journal number three. Let's do, uh, let's do a DVD with bonus features. And it wasn't until after the show was over that they finally wanted to do that stuff. Let's do an art book. <laughs> Please. So, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Oh, pour one out. And what has been amazing about doing this show is we have been using the Wayback Machine on archive.org to go to Reddit and Tumblr posts from when the episodes aired. So we are talking about not how the show is remembered, but the evolution of its fandom. And one of my favorite kind of tent poles in that was when it was finally noticed that... um, Blendin was in the background of the first three episodes. There was a Reddit thread uh, pointing this out, 
And most of the users were like, it probably doesn't mean anything. It's probably an Easter egg, like the snail in Adventure Time. Seeing the fandom go from that to, you know, force (laughs) cracking every cryptogram in under 10 minutes and putting it up on the wiki uh, and tracking that episode by episode was fascinating. But we saw something on that Reddit thread that we did not have an answer to. There was a user named Blendon Blandon who was saying it's probably nothing (laughs) to everyone. This was before that name was known. Do you have any idea who that was posting? Gosh, that's a great question. You know, I mean, we we were closely monitoring all fan response, and it's definitely the kind of thing that we would have done to, like, hop in and troll somebody. Um, but I I have no memory of doing that, and normally I take such pleasure from trolling people that it sticks <laughs> in my memory. So it may have been a crew member um, or, or even somebody, you know, working in the wider Disney team who was working on – you know, ads or some fan within the universe of Disney's NDAs must have done that. Um, But it it wasn't me. Um, I would remember if it was me. So that uh, in a very minor way, it is is what is known as an alternate reality game or ARG, which uh, (laughs) Webster's Dictionary defines as an interactive. That's more like Wikipedia's dictionary. I know. But I was just making a call back to the... I like it. I like it. Uh, Wikipedia calls an ARG an interactive network narrative that uses the real world as a platform and employs transmedia storytelling to deliver a story that may be altered by players' ideas or actions. So, um, when we last left uh, Gravity Falls in our previous episode, we left Gravity Falls. <laughs> and... Uh, in that on a bus, yeah, on a bus, and and on that bus uh, were Dipper and Mabel and Waddles and Kyle McLaughlin. But also on that bus uh, was a code that eventually the fans figured out uh, by just brute to- forcing it, which uh, is <laughs> yes. really, really, really hard to do with yes. uh, the Visionaire cipher because it requires you to shift every letter. Mm-hmm. Uh- and part of the code was the the key itself. And the the full thing became hidden deep within the woods, a buried treasure waits, secrets lost and statues found beyond the rusty gates. And uh, after the credits of this final episode of season two, there was a mysterious brief clip of what appeared to be live action footage of Bill Cipher's uh, petrified carcass uh, that appears at the end of the episode after he is destroyed. Um, so. Not, not. We didn't really quite know what to make of that. Well, okay. My first question actually is: hmm. What were you planning to release that key a different way eventually? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I think. I, I, I mean, the thing is, you know, when, when it came to, we put so much work and effort and thought and care and debate and craft into the storytelling of Gravity Falls and the timing and the performances and the art and. Everything about Gravity Falls that was related to, like, codes and mysteries and ARG-esque stuff, that was for me to do on my own with the, like, 10 minutes that existed between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. and my first meeting. So that was like, yeah. if Alex can find the time to, you know, pull this stuff out of his yeah, yeah. then then sure, we won't get in his way. Um, but we were really, you know, with that stuff, it was just me kind of... Because I had a holistic knowledge of everything happening in the show and all of the plans, you know, at the front end end of it saying, okay, I'm going to try putting this here. I'm going to call back to this later. Okay, I'm going to put a code here. And I don't know when I'm going to tell people how to decipher it, but I know I'm not ready yet. So I'm going to have my own keyword for it yeah. and I'll hold on to it. And of course, they just brute forced the damn yeah. thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know. Because it's a it's an army of of nerds. They that is not the same people questioning if Blendon was just a fun Easter egg. Fans that are didn't the most powerful anything. computer of all. They have, they have been changed by the experience. Exactly, and that's why this whole this podcast episode is to me kind of the culmination of this whole, the whole concept of Mystery Shack Look Back is preserving what was so special about this particular fandom because what follows really encapsulates why. This was so special and and uh, something you have somewhat jokingly compared Gravity Falls to, although there are genuine parallels and shared crew, is who shot Mr. Burns Part mm-hmm. One and Two, uh, which 
in its own way was sort of an ARG. There was the call collect contest going on. That that no one officially <laughs> solved. <laughs> that no one officially solved. Uh, so have you always been a fan of ARGs? Did you know the term I ARG? I definitely didn't know the term, um, but I, I've always been... Like, my sort of, like, foundational intuition about entertainment is to try to reward your audience for their time and attention. Um, and it comes both from a passionate Absolutely. love of pieces of media that I have found so rewarding and, and that have made me feel seen when I felt invisible or made me feel like a sense of wholeness when I felt, you know, empty inside. And, you know, whether it's in the form of rewarding hidden background jokes in The Simpsons, or whether it's in the form of incredibly complex callbacks in uh, Arrested Development, um, or whether it's in the form of secret hidden, oh, there's a bonus world in Super Mario World that if you find all the stars, you get to Star Road. Like, all of those are kind of the same thing to me, which is... Or or it, um, the Michael Rianda pointed out Chairface Chippendale's first two letters on the moon staying there in every oh, night yeah. shot for the rest of the tick. Like that was like, that was his version of like that when that light bulb went on as a young viewer, like, wait a minute, I'm so used to no one thinking that I'm paying that much attention. And I'm so used to not being rewarded for yeah. remembering what happened last week. And as a, as a kid, I definitely, all of those little moments of reward really stuck with me and really bonded me to whatever the media was that I was I was watching. Um, exactly. It, for me, it all just came from, like, I want to maximize the reward. I want to maximize the, the reward. Uh, and so the fact that that started to bleed outside the boundaries of the narrative and enter into these spaces of what now has terms like ARG or meta narrative or whatever, um, it was just a logical mm -hmm. extension for me of that of that yeah, thought. Yeah, and I didn't, even though there were certainly ARGs in existence, I had not heard the term until the year prior uh, mm -hmm. to what we are about to get into when po Pokemon Go was huge. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I had never participated in one, but I was like, you know, I remember Who Shot Mr. Burns, to me, what was so impactful about that was like, it was the first Simpsons two-parter. Like, it had continuity. Yeah. Um, and I think I... I think I was too young to like actually get in on the like mystery solving part of it, but I, I knew about it and I just felt like, oh, these are these characters I love in this world that is so comedically rewarding. And now it's also rewarding dramatically in this new way of like, you pay attention to what happened last week. Yeah. Um, and the sort of the lore around that definitely made an impression of me. Um, and that's as well as once you, once you do get to the age where you can look at the mystery that it, is solvable just I, I, watching I, I part can one, certainly remember um, if you pay attention the feeling I felt when I realized uh, that you can see Nibbler pushing Fry into the mm, mm -hmm. into yeah. the, that's another really good uh, in, one uh, that's another pilot, really smart one um, and those little things each time you see something like that that you haven't ever seen in a show before it it it, it jolts you it, it makes you sit up um, I, my most prized possession I own I think possibly is uh, Josh Weinstein yeah uh, for your birthday when Gravity Falls ended yeah, yeah he gave he gave me a uh, a copy of one of the original scripts of Who Shot Mr Burns which they made so few of these copies because uh, they had to they be did kept not want secret. it to be leaked yeah. Yeah. yeah and the second records finished they would <laughs> they would escort the script out of the room. <laughs> Yeah, no, I have this in like a vacuum sealed box. I have to preserve Conan <laughs> O'Brien's actual fingerprint sweat on on this thing. Oh gosh, and certainly that that jolt for me for Gravity Falls was uh, the end of Hand the Rocks the Mabel, re revealing that mm -hmm. Gideon has the second journal, uh, and and just showing that yeah, like we're gonna follow up on this was that joke we were watching some kind of live chat um in, in the me and me and some of the crew that was staying late that day when that episode aired we were watching the live chat and we saw people react live Ooh. when the book was revealed and it was <laughs> a thousand times better than we had ever hoped that's like, awesome we <laughs> nice. were just so blown away that like it, people they met us they, they, you know, if you build it, they will come. Like, yeah. we built these little breadcrumbs, and we're like, maybe they'll like breadcrumbs. And they're like, give us mountains of bread now. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. And then it turns out your viewership was 100% in the Mallard demographic. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, breadcrumbs? Yeah. yeah, we had no idea uh, just how much just swarming Mallards left and right. Uh, a dream. An Unfortunately, dream. they don't count those views, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, I'm... Um, July 20th, 2016, at underscore Alex Hirsch, you tweeted, are you ready? Let the games begin. 
and then a hashtag and a cryptogram. I mean, just take us into this. What? When did you hatch this wild, wild plan? We were trying to finish the show. It was insanely difficult. Um, you know, the first seasons are so hard because you're like making, you're just in, like trying to find out what works and what doesn't. And last seasons are incredibly hard because you're trying to pay and everything that's all, off. That's and, because, all you got. and that's all you got. That's all we had. Yeah, we never got to have that like season two, three, four, where you're just kind of, you know, growing and coasting and letting it happen mm-hmm. naturally. And then you got to like really turn on the brain yeah. power to like, okay, how do we wrap this up? We just had beginning and then we just had ending. Yeah. Um, and it was extraordinarily difficult. Um, and, but it was, we had so much passion working so hard. And I think I was, I just, like I said, it all flows from this idea of reward. And I felt so much gratitude and connection and kinship with the audience that we had created. And I also recognized like this audience in my mind, I thought they were all going to evaporate, you know, Aww. uh, uh we're three, still here. three or four months. I, I, yeah, I never would have guessed that three or four months after the show was over. So I thought, you know, how, how can I create one final extra reward? Um, I, I think one thing that was I was partially inspired by, which is an odd thing, was uh, whatever. I think I was maybe in seventh or eighth grade, uh, and Banjo Kazooie on the N sixty four was a video game <laughs> that had secrets that you couldn't access. Okay, uh, yeah, there, there was a. a, a a, a rotating key made of ice that you could see inside a cave and at the end of the game they're like you know how do we get this key who knows maybe one day we'll figure it out and you couldn't get it it was not accessible they had planned on okay well when we release a sequel four years from now or something maybe we'll do one of these Sonic and Knuckles like double cartridges where one cartridge plugs into the next and you can go back into the previous game and unlock things ah. but they didn't actually know if they could pull it off technologically and it turns out they couldn't. <laughs> um, so they promised in this game this, the ability to access all these things, um, and then there was no way to access mm. it. But at the time when the game came out, there were message boards saying, okay, there's got to be a way That's, to get the it's ice It's similar key. to the, the, wow. Mew, uh, the Mew that was not under the truck in Pokemon Red and Blue. Quite a bit like that. Quite a bit like that. Uh, well, here's a funnier way to picture that story, though. Rareware uh, was based in the UK. They were actually, their studios were out of a barn that they purchased on the countryside. So now picture a bunch of Cockney guys in a in a barn being like, is there any way to get these cartridges to connect? Yeah, with dawning horror on their faces saying, what's all this thing? <laughs> what's, yeah, all exactly. this? <laughs> what's all this? Their monocle <laughs> fell into the T slowly and dramatically. <laughs> and on the, on the other side of the pond, me and all the, you know, 12-year-old nerds on the on the message board were saying, there's got to be a way to find the ice key. And it became this hive of, you know, people were making stuff up, posting false screenshots, which, again, you had to take a picture of your television set mm. with your <laughs> camera and then, you know, uh, go and get the film developed and then scan it with your scanner and upload it on your, if you're rich, 56K connection, but probably <laughs> 28.8. Um, and so there was this real creepy pasta energy that was developing on this mm. one message board about this thing. And I was so obsessed with it. And I forgot about it years later. And then in college, some rare programmer just like went on a message board and was like, yeah, there's no way to do it. But we actually created an, a really elaborate code for ourselves, the game developers, to access that stuff that you can enter in one of the levels. And we're going to tell you now, oh like God. eight years after the game wow. had come out and, and no one had ever just found like it yet. And it was... Oh my it was gosh. early enough that like the modding community hadn't really taken off. So like modders hadn't found this yet. Um, and so the fact that I could in college like race to my game, go to uh, the level and stomp on all the letters and access these secrets that I'd been obsessed with when I was 12. I was like, that's the coolest thing I've ever yeah. heard of. The idea of like a, a hidden secret in a love piece of media that you can't open up until years later. I want to do something that feels like that. That was a surprisingly large point of inspiration for me. And let's just say the name. Cypher Hunt. <laughs> It seems like the the AMA you did in character as Bill Cipher is sort of a, a soft test of uh, of this kind of idea. I mean that that was definitely like me like trying out like okay like what are all the ways to engage with this. Um, I, I do remember also for the weekend before the Stanchurian candidate aired, uh, I made a, a Twitter account for Grunkle Stan's hashtag Yes We Stand, and you got yeah. Uh, yeah. you got Lemon Demon <laughs> to do a campaign song. <laughs> yeah, we got got Neil to do a little song. Like th- I, I remember that one was definitely like Grunkle Stan as a character. Y- you know, he he's 
he's got a huge ego and he would be so excited by the idea of having followers. So it was like, okay, Grunkle Stan would ask his followers, uh, right. Yes. We stand on the biggest place you can and take a picture and oh, whoever yes, wins, I'll give contest. you a mystery prize. And when I started seeing, when I started seeing the amount of people uploading Twitter where they had either written, yes, we stand on their head or they had put it on a giant wall or they had talked their principal into letting them put a banner in their school. That's when it really started to click like, <laughs> okay, we've got a captive audience who's ready to, Follow marching orders and do crazy stuff. In the Bill Safer AMA, you said you would answer their question first if they recorded themselves screaming or um, what was the other one, Ella? Or a picture of them with a tinfoil hat. And every single response we found had that. So you just, I guess, answered <laughs> them in whatever order. And it's, I'm picturing you just like in front of a crowd where you're just like, ah, pff, what if I asked you to, I don't know, to put a tinfoil hat on? And then they all do. And you're like, right, yes, we stand on your body. And then they do. And you're like, Okay. And you're like, okay, so here? go <laughs> yeah. to St. Petersburg. <laughs> yeah, these people would be willing to fly to Russia. The, at, 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 like, little by little, that started becoming clear. And, and like, I would, I would do stuff on Twitter where I would just be like, I would ask some, I'd ask some polling question. I'd say, to answer yes, reply with your favorite Pokemon. To answer no, reply with Ace of Base lyrics. And then I would look <laughs> at my replies and it would just be like, Jigglypuff, I saw the sign. Wigglytuff, don't turn around. I was like, this is chaos. Yeah. I love this. And you're like, oh, um, like, I have become a god. <laughs> my, my own inner Bill Cipher just enjoyed the, like, the madness that could be unleashed. But I appreciate you know? that you ultimately were wanting to use it as, like you said, a reward and, and a summation of the community that developed over time with this show. You, you definitely could have started a Heaven's Gate type situation if you wanted to. <laughs> Drink the pit cola. There were some fans that were kind of doing that stuff on their own. There was this one guy who was writing the most insane, like very serious. This was like an adult man writing these really, really complex Oof. theories about how Gravity Falls was predictive programming for the next 9-11. And it was oh my just gosh. incredible, now, wait, incredible no, so, detail so on this guy's I, blog. I do have a question. Was it? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, coming. <laughs> yeah, wait, you it's, also it, bragged about your induction soon. to the Illuminati. You have made no efforts <laughs> to hide this. <laughs> Are they cool with that kind of approach to their organization? Is this the new Illuminati? They have to have a social media presence. L like like most fictional organizations, my headcanon of how they feel is as accurate as anyone else's. That's so. accurate. <laughs> There you go. So they love it. So they love it. Yeah. You're their PR person. They love it. So I know that in the commentary, you said it took about nine months from start to finish to put the cipher hunt together. Um, at what point did you start? Like, at what point in production did you start doing it? And at what point did you start planting clues? Well, it, it takes about a year from the very first outline of an episode to the final mix of sound of the episode yeah. um, to make to make an episode of an animated show the way we did on mm -hmm. on Gravity Falls. Um, and, you know, a, a big chunk of that is is writing. A big chunk of it is, 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 is uh, pre-production, art, then just voice acting. Uh, and then the animation takes a couple of months and then retakes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then there's just so many steps. Um, so... You know, anything that, like, anytime an episode of a show like Gravity Falls or Adventure Time or Owl House or something, anytime that episode airs, people will take to the internet with a suggestion about what should happen next week. And it's like, buddy, that ship has Barely, sailed. This was yep, written a yep. year yeah. ago, bare minimum. So yeah. <laughs> it was as we were approaching the writing of the finale, um, it... And as I was starting to grapple with the emotional weight of this thing is going to be over, uh, you know, I, I, I would love to do one last thing for the fans, um... Uh, that's when I started sort of tinkering with the, the idea of it. Yeah. So um, we're talking February, and, 2015 or so. Or, yeah. yeah so, something like that. Um, and then I just, I didn't tell anybody. I went and got lunch with my art director, Ian. Um, and I, I put that thought in his brain and then we forgot about it for a while. <laughs> because, um, uh, <laughs> as art director, was he the one, uh, hiding the visionaire keys in the episodes or? Yes. Uh, every, I think every single visionaire key you see in season two was hidden by Ian. Yeah. And he's yeah. getting craftier and craftier. And he is like <laughs> the most extraordinary. He's like a mixture between like, Ron Swanson and <laughs> a Swiss Army knife yeah. and the Terminator. Like, he can accomplish anything. And Ron anything. Swanson is already a combination between Ron Swanson and a Swiss Army <laughs> knife. That means he's double Swiss Army knife. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. This man is is uh, made out of Swiss Army knives, and uh, <laughs> there's nothing he can't accomplish. And so... <laughs> 
This is the worst superhero I have ever heard the, been present for the creation of. Swiss Army Too many Man. knives. He could do anything. I don't know. He could do all the things. Um, and he's bored because he needs a challenge. And I said, how about Treasure Hunt? Um, but it, it wasn't until... It wasn't until we were like late, you know, actually in the animation process um, that we started like actively planning it and brainstorming and, and calling and emailing. Because I imagine during that AMA and Yes We Stand contest period, that was when that idea was still kind of percolating. And then you're like, okay, now I yeah, think we yes. can do this. Um, and it really, the, the timing all worked out because I finally, you know, as the show was ne- nearing a close, the it was doing well enough that they finally wanted to make Journal 3, and okay. I realized that the timing of Journal 3 coming out and the timing of this treasure hunt, it could both celebrate the finale of the show and promote the upcoming journal. Like, it was this perfect little yeah. window yeah. of time. So did you ever, I mean, with the idea of it being promotional in mind, did you did you even, I imagine the answer is no, but did you ever even have the thought of approaching Disney and being like, hey, here's what I would like to do. Like, I imagine this was, you were completely on your own. I had learned by now uh, that... (laughs) (laughs) Ask for forgiveness, not permission. I I mean, yes. Like, they, the the creative executives that I worked with were wonderful. Um, The standards and legal team, uh, I I really don't have a single good thing to say about them. Um, uh, I just found them to be paranoid and passionless, and they saw creativity as a liability not an asset and Mm. they seem to the more excited i was about something the more they seem to intuit that as oh my gosh we have to stop him from doing this uh, that that, that clears up a point that we will get to later in the hunt itself (laughs) actually (laughs) um and so it was obvious to me that like in 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 a million years i wasn't going to run this by them also I knew that by the t- if I could just get the piece of uh, the little hints in the episode, if I could just get them in the episode without Disney knowing about it, once the sh- once the hunt began, they couldn't. What were they going to yeah. do? Fire me? The show's over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm already gone. I've already cleared out my office. They're not going to stop the army of fa- of fans. That would be impossible. And yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> at a certain point, it becomes all publicity is good publicity for them. I suppose they they probably once it started getting traction, they were like. Yeah, okay, this is fine. <laughs> they never talked to me about it. There was no communication about it whatsoever. Gotcha. I did have a conversation. I called up my lawyer um, before we launched it, and I was like, what do you think about this? And he said, I think that we never had this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know what I think? I, I, I'm going to say, you know, we, this never happened. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Which which I took to mean in my own personal interpretation, he is not going to leverage the effort to stop me, but he is not going to encourage this or give me any clues or hints as to how I can and or can't get away with needed. it. That's all we needed. Yep. That's all we <laughs> needed. Um I it did I did start to get a little worried. It was the same summer as Pokemon Go and mm-hmm. When I saw the way that people were responding to Pokemon Go, I was like, oh, this is amazing. But when I also would hear, like, nightly stories about, like, someone gets their leg caught in a bear trap in the woods playing Pokemon Go, mm-hmm. I was oh, man, I was just praying that nobody got hurt. Yeah. <laughs> there And, like, at least six of the first couple posts you mentioned, hey, uh, so be safe. And yeah. even say, hey, Pokemon Go rules apply in, in I think, the first message. Yeah. Yes. And because it is definitely a, a massive scaling up from the yes we stand contest like i think one of the winners had like the banner on their over their house so up until this point you know the most dangerous thing that someone has done by proxy was climb up onto their own roof a la- climb a uh, ladder. Yeah. yeah yeah gotten a ladder and ladders you know the statistic about ladders ella well it's more dangerous than <laughs> one loaded gun which is why one has to own 10 guns in order to be properly safe right um in case somebody tries to bring a ladder in, of course. But yeah, that was the the really the most dangerous thing that I guess that had happened up until that point. But even potentially, so I guess there there is a certain you, you want to make sure that there there must have been kind of a nerve wracking thing though. It, it, it was it was a little nerve wracking. Like the, the 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 day before we launched it, we were mainly very very excited, and like there was nothing that could have stopped me from doing. There's nothing anyone could have said that would have stopped me from doing it no, at this point. You because you already went we, out yeah. around the world and, and <laughs> I, did yes, 
I hid these clues. Oh, and I had such an amazing time hiding the clues. And I had yeah. so much fun. It was like the most fun thing I've ever done. And it definitely made me think like, why am I working in cartoons, which takes so long to give a reward when I could just be hiding treasures all over the place and, and tweeting <laughs> about like it. I feel like a delightful magical creature hiding goodies was like, around this the world. Is, why did I become, why did I study animation and not leprechauning? Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> if there was a career in just a general mischievous, uh, ridiculous uh, BS. General uh, impish delight if your college offered a course in popping out from under a uh, stone bridge and saying <laughs> answer me these riddles three you'd be like oh that that one yeah <laughs> yeah a hundred percent now being a professional goblin was so much better than being a showrunner <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. like the effort effort to reward ratio it was so much easier to make a cypher hunt than to make like one plot of a tv and show and a lot of it and- was <laughs> a lot of it was also like vacation right and, and yeah, and I also got to leave my office for the first time yeah. in, in multiple years. The first four are in St. Petersburg, Russia, Tokyo, Japan, Atlanta, Georgia, at, and Newport, Rhode Island. Yes. The four states that border Spring Court. Of course. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, it, Jason, do you remember at this point, had I given you any heads up about this thing? Was I like kind of letting you in on it? Or did you just discover it like all the rest of the fans? I discovered it. The re- I remember you were traveling around and I just remember being like, good for you. <laughs> you were like, yeah, you were- <laughs> Alex was like, I'm going to St. Petersburg for a convention and that's it. You're like, that's strange. Have fun. I, well, I, yeah, it was sort of like, that's, uh, you know, I was so happy that you were doing something. I was like, hopefully you can just get out of town He's and just let, the house. let the gravity falls go and just yeah. do whatever he I remember just like, because he was posting about it, like, you know, talking about vacationing on Twitter. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. It's, that's good for him to get a get a break from the gravity falls. Did you think that resting maybe would have been better? Or <laughs> I mean, th- this was you know, if you're going to be going to various landmarks, it it's only more fun to be having a national treasure esque. Yeah. Uh, so it so didn't to me, yeah, it really work for you. So then. to it the uh, like... to the St. Petersburg <laughs> and Tokyo Con, were you just like invited, just cold emailed by the con staff? Or yeah, I, well, I was being invited to like i have been invited to like every convention, um, and I'd just been ignoring them because I was too damn busy. Um, but once the show was over, I'm like, okay, I'm going to say yes to a few cool ones, yeah. and these will also be like nice, distant places to hide clues. Mm. Um, the the St. Petersburg one. There, the most nerve wracking moment for me of this entire thing was oh, the St. Petersburg clue was hidden in me and Ian had gone online and we ordered all kinds of things for ARG craft. Um, including one of them was this rusty metal screw, this big bolt that if you unscrewed it inside was a little magnetic capsule that had a unscrollable like fortune cookie, like a long little slim piece of paper. But what didn't occur to me was when I was in the airport, in Russia, I'm noticing how different Russian airport security mm. is from American airport security. I'm noticing, like, how many giant, like, old-timey, like, machine guns and army Russian oh. army people are everywhere. And I'm standing in line waiting to get to the point where we, like, go through security again. And I'm noticing... I'm a man from America who's never been to Russia with a tiny metal screw inside which is a magnet, unscrollable which is a code written in <laughs> in a code language. I couldn't look more like a spy if I oh, wanted dear. to look like a spy. <laughs> well, you're a man who lives a life of danger. <laughs> if, if I was caught with this and they, you know, if they uh, found the screw and if they opened it up and they said, what the hell is this? <laughs> and that would have been it for Alex Hirsch. It might be it. Well, and th- this wasn't <laughs> that distant from the time that there was that like that like frat guy who stole a poster from North Korea and was just sent to hard labor. And oh I, I hadn't thought about any of this until I was actually in Russia going through security. Um, and luckily, you know, it went on without a hitch. They, they didn't notice me, but I genuinely because if if they if they were like you know what is this message? Explain I, like. What do I say? Uh, do you guys know Hannah Montana? Are, are you familiar with the Disney Channel? Uh, like, where would I even you would begin? Quickly turn into Justin Ryland. <laughs> oh, jeez! It's hard oh, enough gosh. for me to explain Gravity Falls to like my neighbors. Yes, yeah, it's hard enough for me to explain to my own relatives at Thanksgiving. But I couldn't imagine explaining it to airport security. That same type of sort of creative risk taking when all you're doing is drawing cartoons the worst that could happen is your cartoon isn't funny enough. But when you're doing spycraft in Russia, there's no ceiling to the worst that could possibly happen. So pros, it's not as hard of work. Cons, I might get shot. I get, okay. 
Yeah. Y- yeah. The, uh, I, I'm weighing the weighing it, out here. It, it was weird the, um, to give you guys a sort of a time capsule of what this moment was like because this is so specific and strange. Uh, earlier I mentioned how like a big chunk of the Gravity Falls fandom is, is, is Mexico City. Yeah. A, another huge chunk of the Gravity Falls fandom, for reasons I still only somewhat understand, is, is Russian fans. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it, it's the biggest crowd – I spoke in front well, of... Well, they sent you a video, didn't they, inviting you? Th- they did. Um, it was massive, massive. And I didn't understand this. I, my theory, and some uh, Russian fan out there, please correct me if I'm misunderstanding there this. There was a Russian fan when you joined the call. My wife was listening in at first, but oops. <laughs> that would have been good timing if this was earlier. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, well, may- maybe you can ask your wife. I- 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 I'm under the impression that Gravity Falls, I think it was one of like very f- a very small amount of cartoons that were like translated into Russian on state TV or something that there was some that they had some extra access to it and not access to a bunch of other things and um it was it was very surreal out there and the most surreal moment for me was um the first day that we were in St. Petersburg I was there with Pat McHale creator of Over the Garden Wall and we had wonderful hosts that were all young animation nerds in St. Petersburg who were very kind to us and showed us around and and really treated us like rock stars um and but our first day, I, I ran away from our group. I said, oh, I got to go into a into a souvenir shop. I, I just want to get, you know, the most basic. Let me let me get a, um, a Russian hat and a little vodka jar and l- let me get the Russian uh, Matryoshka dolls. And I ran in there. And I'm not kidding. The first thing I saw was there was a massive wall of mugs. And there was only two types of mug. And they just had one type or the other type taking up half of this enormous wall. Wow. And one type of mug was these mugs with an image of, Obama and Putin, like, angrily squaring off, like, nose-to-nose, like, Street Awful. Fighter that someone Awful. had photoshopped <laughs> together. Um, this was really exciting to Russians at the time. And then on the other side was just bootleg Gravity Falls wow. mugs of the image of them all from the theme song. It was, like, Gravity Falls and Putin and Obama and then Matryoshka dolls. And friends. In, and friends. That's it was my so show. surreal. Obama and Putin yeah, and Gravity yeah. Falls and friends. I would watch that. I, that sounds, like, full of conflict. It was very <laughs> surreal. Um, and that was like, I walking around, like, I, I would get stopped in the street by random people saying, Alexander's gravity falls. Like, it was really <laughs> that's weird. Amazing. Wow, that's so cool. I, it's at like, least when a Russian stops you in the street and screams, it could have gotten worse. So it could have gotten worse. Yeah. Um, so this first clue that you, that you tweeted, is this an Ian Worrell? Oh, yeah. yeah. So a- any artwork that you would have seen uh, for the Cypher Hunt, the art was all done by Ian and the, the rhymes were all done by me. That makes sense. That's a pretty equal distribution of work. Art by Ian Worrell, sick rhymes by Alex Hirsch. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, do you remember what the clue was in St. Petersburg? Oh, gosh. Um, Shelby, do you want to give a quick rundown? Oh, yes. Drop it on us. The first one had a cipher that translated to cipher hunt and the first message was the urban legend has come true cipher statue calling you the secret map is in your hand to trace the clues across the land and then um don't forget it's all for pleasure the hunt itself is the real treasure but a prize awaits the first one there be safe be smart and of course beware so if we look at the picture itself it has the building in russia (laughs) <laughs> with like a very tiny little circle around where you needed to go to find <laughs> wildly specific, very specific, and um, fans were able to find it via the picture, which is great. Like I'm glad that Russian fans. That's so cool. Which is amazing. That's just a snippet of a location. <laughs> yes, at the Kazan Cathedral. So yes. not only did you go to a country with a <laughs> piece of sp- spy material, you defaced a church. That's exactly right. <laughs> Awesome. I, I had a, a a realization of this. I think at this at this point um, in the hunt that because I was ready to get on some planes, <laughs> and then oh I my forgot God. that of course <laughs> there's an international community, and we can all sort of like trade off and <laughs> do our own little parts. But, but I, I was think like, there should be a hunt specifically for Jason to go on. Oh, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. I really appreciate that. Um, but I, I also want to just say, like, here you go, buddy. <laughs> yeah, here's an international treasure hunt just for you. Um, <laughs> just tweeted everybody. All right, guys, this one's just for Jason. Nobody else. <laughs> no, no, hey, <laughs> hey, I'm tweeting out the clues. But if you're not, if you're not Jason Ritter, please ignore these tweets. <laughs> <laughs> but I, if, for people listening to this. If you haven't seen it already, look at the artwork of all of these clues and things. Yeah, I will link this folder of the clues in the description of the podcast. So, uh, in the little tiny 
screw, if that's correct. The message uh, translated to, finally, the hunt can begin. So switch your rubles out for yen. Turn left when you're at the shrine's door. When you reach the statue, turn left once more. In the leftmost corner in the back is the info that you lack. A sword and a crescent mark the clue. Cypher's statue calling you. Uh, so the, the reference to yen, of course, pointed people to Japan. Uh, and then from there, it was just a matter of figuring out the exact location. <laughs> Gosh. I'm fairly certain that the way people had to figure it out was going through your Twitter to, like, see your travels to figure out which shrine it was specifically. Oh, yes. You had posted a, a, a selfie at this uh this shrine, correct? I think that probably is what helped the fans. Is that the clue? I think so, maybe. There is a symbol of, I don't know, moon and sword and star. Th- th- this was a really difficult one because these shri- there's shrines all over many parts of Japan. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of the shrine capital of the world. It's kind of where most of them are. <laughs> I mean, they're real shriners there. Yeah. Big shrine fans, and um, there was... The the particular one that we went to, our hosts when we were there told us that this shrine had become a huge hotspot for the fandom of a particular anime that was airing at the time that was wildly That's popular. Perfect. That would be Love Live because the character Nozomi serves as the shrine maiden and uh, was made into the official mascot of the shrine. This shrine was famous for being where fans would go to write their wishes for what would happen in canon ah, on these blocks and wow. hang them up. And so th- it was referred to sort of colloquially as like the cartoon shrine by some folks ah, there. So perfect. I thought, oh, this is the perfect yeah, that's spot perfect. for it. You're like, I don't feel as half as bad at, about putting it here as putting it in a church in Russia. Well, I didn't feel bad about... I, I'm like, not feeling bad, but feeling <laughs> nervous, I guess. <laughs> I, knew, I knew at this stage, like, the... F- there's nothing that the fans won't figure out somehow. So yeah. we were re- ready to make this unfairly hard. So you weren't you weren't imagining <laughs> that there was going to be a huge stretch of time between clues. You were thinking this was going to be a very quick. Endeavor. I knew once we lit the fuse, this thing would move pretty fast. Yeah. The card you placed on the cartoon shrine with the uh, the sword and scimitar, the Shriner symbols. That's why I said shrine. Oh, very right, good. Yeah, caught that. Oh, quick, just making sure. Um. Mm. <laughs> There is an encoded message that says, consider in your quest for truth, a hunter of the fountain of youth, 400 before his name is written, outside the gate is where it's hidden. Find what's lost to pass the test from a shrine that's east to a shrine that's west. So how many hours a day were you on Twitter during this? I just realized. (laughs) All, all hours. All hours. Um, yeah. I, the, the, I, when I when we launched the tweet, I think it was I think it was actually Comic Con. I think I was at a party on the dock, like watching the sunset. Like, all right, here we go, nice. here it comes. <laughs> um, and I basically from that point until it was over. It's just the most fun I ever had. I mean, me yeah. and Ian were just texting each other constantly, just like blaring the National Treasure soundtrack <laughs> and just like yeah. cackling. We're trying to figure That's this amazing. out, and it was so exciting watching like snowballs of right and wrong opinion materialize immediately, yeah. and the incredible confidence with which people would proclaim totally wrong theories. Yeah, uh, it was an absolute <laughs> joy to witness. That's amazing, and it's such a it's such a like time lapse hyper speed version of what just happened over the course of of four years from the show premiering to the finale. It's it's like amplified and also on fast forward uh t- to such a degree yeah a hundred percent no it, it did sort of feel like um like some video games where they're trying to create a final last level and they they've run out of sprite so they just have you fight all the mini Mega bosses hard. over yeah. again yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> gee i wonder so what like, kind of okay. i wonder what kind of video game would 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 do that like one made by <laughs> my by ubisoft i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway oh my gosh Oh, you're talking about that? That's the thing that I worked on the least. Don't get me started. Oh, no, that's a whole other conversation. We, we did you. an episode on it, and yeah, sure enough, the there are palette swaps of the mini boss, uh, just forever at the end. Yeah. <laughs> so Shelby, uh, I would have guessed that the person who saw it, the Fountain of Youth as a Pirates of the Caribbean fan was Blackbeard, but as a Ducktales fan, you could tell me that is not <laughs> correct, right? That is not correct. No, Ponce de Leon is the one who is looking for the Fountain of they Youth. They were Ponce's pants. 
<laughs> yes, supposedly that was how uh, Florida was discovered by white people, was that Ponce de Leon was looking for the fountain of youth. Is that part of Mormonism? It sounds like it's part of it Mormonism. It looks like it is, but I don't think it is. That's probably part of Scientology. <laughs> it's part of my terrible pirate-based religion, so. <laughs> uh, okay, so the third clue uh, was revealed to be located at uh, 400, before his name is written, 400 Ponce de Leon Avenue, Northeast, and Atlanta, Georgia. I went and paid my tribute today. <laughs> That's right, because uh, you, you're not that far from it. Yeah, no, it's about 30 minutes. Did from you go there? Wait, did you go to the, the Shriners hunt? Temple? Oh, yeah, no, I totally went to the Shriners <laughs> Temple. And it's funny, because um, I guess they were doing some filming there today, so someone was like, are you here for background? And I went, nope, I'm here for an entirely different purpose. I am with a background. Is it the same one? I'll join it. No, wait, I have something to do tonight. But one of my good friends was like a couple hours north of it. And I guess she had figured out the clue and was like, oh my gosh, one of my <laughs> friends needs to go. But um, the people that found it beat her friends to uh, it. Yeah, see, that's, I think that yeah. there's there's a, there's an egalitarianism to have it to where you place the clues, you got to give every yeah. every kind of region, I guess. I mean, El- Ella and I are from uh, the New York City and Philadelphia area, respectively. So, oops, but <laughs> that's fine. In the folder, there's a picture of the poster. How long before they found it did you put that poster up? Because it's very faded. It doesn't take much in the South, but you probably should have laminated it. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do that myself. Um, but I knew a friend who had the ability to uh, get to that spot. Um, so I, I called up my friend. Um, let's see if we can patch them through here. Are you kidding me? He is the reason that I got into writing and voice acting. <laughs> there he is, folks. Uh, h- hey, Mr. Mr. Bad, thank you for joining us. Who's that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, folks, it appears that uh that Strong Bad himself has joined us on this on this uh podcast. Well, welcome. Strong welcome Bad to the actual show. on Twitter. Yeah. Strong Bad, are are we coming through okay? Oh yeah, you guys you all sound great. How do I look? <laughs> you, look you look amazing. Fantastic. Strong Bad is currently cosplaying Grunkle Stan. We should screenshot that and, and save it for the archive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going for like, you know those cosplays at conventions you can tell the person thought of like five minutes before they walked out the door. They call them closet cosplays, Strong Bad. So I call them tape splays. <laughs> so are there no hard feelings, Strong Bad, after Grunkle Stan threatened to shoot you with his gun for, In that for one being vine? <laughs> on his property? I remember now that. That's lost to the ether. Of... <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> so... The ethernet. It's lost to the ethernet cable. You seem to have a big part to play in this here cipher hunt. Do you want to talk about hiding the, the clue in the for the Shriner's Temple? Well, you know, I know a thing or two about Easter eggs. Mm-hmm. Of course. Oh, yeah, of yeah. Course. I always click things uh, behind, the, behind the black at the end. That's right. And so Alex came to me and he was like, hey, I need to try and click on links in the real world. <laughs> I told him that there's no HTML. That's, that's not how it works, dude. In the physical world, right. No. I had to sort of educate him on that. Yeah. Um, but so we figured out things like, oh, you could put a sign on a telephone pole with, like, a phone number on it. So, you know, we, we went for that. That's why I'm wearing the feds, because I, I put some signs up near the Shriners. Oh. Like, of course, you had to deal. blend in. <laughs> Look at that. Well, but infamously, um, this sign had gotten very water worn. Does Bubs not offer lamination or? Uh, look, it was inside of like a, a ziplock, but I think the the lock failed. Uh... <laughs> oh, the ziplock. F- uh, yeah, that happens some, sometimes. They got some torrential rains in the Atlanta area. They do. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It was the summertime. Uh, strong bad can. Can I do something that is considered uh, something you're not supposed to do? Is it bring back those little, like, brushes that they stick in mustard in old-timey things? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right here. Remember how mustard used to have brushes? Is that what you're about to do? Bring back the mustard brush! <laughs> I'm working on it! We're hashtag bring back the mustard brush. Is that what but you're no, going to do? Strong Bad, I would like to uh, imitate your voice to you. Oh, I don't know, oh God. Okay. <laughs> I don't have to. I don't have to. No, I love it. I love hearing, oh, I yeah, love I hearing love your, too. Yeah. all of you people's terrible impressions. Uh, no, no, wait. No, wait. Okay. I'd say half terrible. All right. I would say, you know, on a range of not 
very good at all to, hey, you got something there. I'm like, hey, that's identifiable. <laughs> certified, certified identifiable. Most of them I are like, identifiable is the best anyone can ever do with any impression. I think. Yeah, exactly. I have. I'm. I'm very embarrassed to admit that occasionally, while drunk, I will text Strong Bad. Uh, my my embarrassing attempts to do a Strong Bad voice. Um, and Strong Bad is uh is very nice and doesn't say anything. <laughs> doesn't sound that I much think, like I Strong Bad. He makes an mine exception are for not you. Too identifiable. Oh man, his hum sorry is the best. He's really oh, good yeah. at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Forever, I'm the pride of the pages. Whoa, that's see, good. That's, that's a good hum song. Yeah, yeah, that goes way beyond identifiable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Identifiable. Wow, that's the best compliment I've ever received. Unfortunately, <laughs> St- strong bad, strong bad. Um, c- c- can I ask you, uh, how did you get all the way from Free Country USA to the Shrine in I Georgia? Know, that's what I was thinking. It, must uh, been... it was difficult, you know, the cheat. He put uh, a Game Gear this time in a yes. blender. Instead, okay. usually to make portals, we put Game okay, Boy. So the, so the Game Boy in the blender travels dimensions, but the Game Gear in the blender... Takes you to Georgia. Now, does, the, does it still <laughs> require you to put six AA batteries in every three hours? <laughs> or yes. That's uh, the problem. you got to uh, shove them in your down your throat, like my old diagram. Okay, all right. I was yeah. going to say, I know you don't have a car, at least not one that that runs so i was wondering how you got there but that that's that's smart that i bet that right, saved a the, lot of the gremlin uh, travel. wouldn't have taken you there no no they wouldn't have gone. that's the road trips you know technically neither road nor trip that we no. take <laughs> no it was instantaneous and there were no roads <laughs> Yeah. S- strong bad and and while we got you here strong bad i just wanted to say how how excited i was when um i believe it was a a halloween uh cartoon That's right. that had uh was it was it bubs was dressed as grunkle stan Naturally. am i remembering that correctly mm-hmm. yeah because i refused to do it because i was looked <laughs> over as the voice of grunkle stan that's true oh, you got to bring do that, that up you got to bring that okay i wasn't going to mention it i Gr- was going to mention did- it <laughs> I did audition uh, Strong Bad for the role of Grunkle Aww. Stan. And Strong Bad, he came all the way to Los Angeles and we put him up in a booth and we had a, a stack of telephone books for him to sit on on a stool to reach the microphone. You gotta um, put an Atari and- Lynx in a blender to get to LA. <laughs> Interesting. I have not heard anyone say the phrase Atari Lynx in about 10 years. <laughs> Oh, that's actually pretty recent. That's pretty I was going to say, yeah, that's like a- oh, oh, I was confusing it with the the jaguar. The jaguar. The jaguar. You were confusing it with me and Strong Bad. We would go golf at Atari Lynx uh, after oh, yeah. recording voices. <laughs> ah. just, we'd put in a, a back twenty. <laughs> is that golf? Is that golf talk? I thought Lynx was a Nintendo thing. Oh yeah, all those right. Lynx in those Zelda's games. That was just the one. Well, let me let me ask you, Strong Bad. What what do you recall about that audition? Do you remember it very well? I remember that the sides were were like the pale shadow of the man that Grunkle that Grunkle Man would become. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, it was between you and Bob Odenkirk. But I listen, I remember the last line was Grunkle Stan screaming the phrase. Kids, where are my pants? <laughs> that sounds almost so exactly that, like the Grunkle Stan that we know, you know today. But you guys know, do you know what Alex Hirsch, do you know the turn down, the email I got that said, sorry, Strong Bad, you don't get the part. Do you know what he said? <laughs> what did what? he say? He said, you sound too much like Strong Bad. <laughs> <laughs> he said he couldn't do it. He's like, it'd be too distracting to watch my cartoon and hear Strong Bad every time Grunkle, the Grunkleman talks. But you know who would have been a fantastic Grunkle Stan? Crack Stuntman. Mm. Oh, man. You don't want to work with that guy. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> that guy needs, like, he his writer is, like, 72 pages long just to record <laughs> some, like, fart noises. Oh, no. So is that that all came into play when he uh, when he played the guest bubs that one time? When original yeah, bubs? Yeah, yeah that, was, that was a nightmare. Oh, I, I I'm sorry. I blocked that out. <laughs> Crack Stuntman is notoriously difficult to work with. She shows up late, uh, has a really weird entourage of people who like know the show from its reboot. Um, mm. It's it, it, it's a it's a mess. Uh, well, I I really like I've been a big fan of Strong Bad for a very long time. I was very excited for an opportunity to work with him, but it was my concern that he has such a iconic and distinctive voice, and I was worried that as a Strong Bad fan, I thought, gosh, if Grunkle Stan sounds too much like Strong Bad, I as an audience would be the whole time just thinking, 
give me strong bad. Like, <laughs> who is this guy? I discovered uh, <laughs> Gravity Falls from a series of tweets between Strong Bad and Joshua Pruitt, where Strong Bad had placed a bump, an autographed bumper cling on uh, his car outside of Disney TVA, and that was how that I learned. Of the sh- I didn't. I didn't have. I wasn't using my Twitters yet. I don't know who did that. <laughs> oh, that must have been someone else. I don't know. Yeah, some Ronald. I think say. his name was Ronald. But uh, you're right. That's not a real name. It it doesn't sound like. <laughs> it. it was very nice of you to hide that that clue for Alex, even after that audition didn't go so well. I hope you were able to to land a spot on the show eventually. Maybe as some kind of merman or something. Who can? Who uh, knows? That's just a sound alike. I recall the hand witch kind of sounding like some of your Teen Girl Squad voices. That wasn't No, you? they got that creepy, like, golem looking guy that does blue lasers the voice. The guy that does the bad guy's voice. <laughs> That's uh, right. Come on, Alex. It must, That's a it genuine article. Him. You got to get through I, I, I did. I, when people told me, it's kind of like the Teen Girl Squad voice. I'm like, no, it's Blue Laser Commander. Get it That's right. That's right. There's a big difference. I do the Teen Girl Squad voice. Right. And the guy green... who does the and a weird zombie voices the blue laser command. <laughs> That's right. You can't get that voice out of a out of a living human. Strong Dad, <laughs> thank you so much for helping out with the cipher hunt. Thank you so much for being gracious enough to audition for the role of Grunkle Stan. Um, all, always a pleasure, and your cosplay is better than It's better than identifiable. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> You guys have that, is an, uh, that is one identifiable plus cosplay, Strong Pad. Hey, thanks. I found this tassel on a couch. Do you need to put a patch <laughs> to cover where the tassel I was did. taken? I did, in fact. I put an X of duct tape. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you, Strong Pad. Thank, Thank you, you, Strong Pad. Thank, Thank you, guys. Here's <laughs> my nose. It's Good nice nose. <laughs> Good news. And if you ever talk to one uh, Matthew Chapman for whatever reason, tell him thank you too for no particular reason. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the chief's running around. Woo! There he goes. Woo! This is a lost poster for Waddles. Oh, that's oh it! My god. That's it! Oh my god! But it's extremely it's rained super, out. super faded. It was super washed out, but they found it like upside down. They were able to flip it and sort of put it together and j- just make out the uh, the number. Is there a phone number we can call? <laughs> Try read one. There's there. Oh, three two three. All right, go go ahead and call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys, we're gonna call the number. And it was a poster that read name Waddles, sex, I don't know, breed. Pig, weight fifteen pounds. Last seen sitting around some rocks near a creek. Additional info: oink 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 oink, etc. <laughs> I liked the uh, n- Waddles non-binary king confirmed. Confirmed queen. Yeah, royalty. Uh, um, old fifteen poundy. Well, no, sorry, shouldn't dead name Waddles. <laughs> um, so the phone number, yes. Yeah, that contained uh, Grunkle Stan's actual phone number. He, Stan has many, many <laughs> burner phones. That's, That's just true. One of, one of Stan's many burner phones, <laughs> which were which were given to him by Saul Goodman when he declined the role. <laughs> yeah, at least two thirds of the bottomless pit is full up with Grunkle Stan's burner phones. <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness he kept now the wait, same burner wait, phone Alex, for everything. How does something that is bottomless get full? Uh, you know what? I- I'm not an astrophysicist, but a Ford could answer that question for you. We'll ask Rob when we get to the Eternal <laughs> Three. If you can figure out how to get J.K. Simmons on this podcast, <laughs> if he even knows what Gravity Falls is, <laughs> he remembers. <laughs> <laughs> did, you did say he got most lines in the first take, which means he was not in that booth for very long. Definitely the least amount of time in that booth for sure. I mean, I, we'll we'll get to this more formally a little later in the hunt, but. That was, I mean, that was a close call with that clue. Did you have a backup plan uh, in the event that, that that clue was lost to the annals of time and the sewers of Georgia? We hadn't prepared any actual contingencies. Um, but as we saw that happen, it definitely started to percolate in our minds. If something goes wrong, we, again, it's it's the same thesis of, like, reward. Like, if a clue goes missing, we need to replace it with two clues. Gotcha. Like, like, the thought of, like, anything that's subtractive must be, like, double added back so it's not just what you expected, but even more. Makes sense, um, makes so sense. So we didn't know what that would be, but we knew we would have to if that happened. That'll come into play later. For now, there's an encrypted message on the poster that once decoded reads, 
Uh, across from the stones of the springs, you'll find some peculiar things. Tied to a root is a lone pink key. Dig to find what waits for thee. And apparently you had to reverse the phone number in order to to find Grunkle Stan's message. And uh, the wiki has graciously archived that message. And But we can we will play it for you now. Hello, it's Grunkle Stan, and I have a riddle for you. What has two legs during the day, four legs during the night, and uh, it's red and white? I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm no good at this riddle. It's an ochre court, all right? The next clue, it's an ochre court. It's um, it's like a like a big old building in Rhode Island, and you go up some stairs, and there's going to be a bunch of pictures of nuns on the wall. you, you got to look behind one of the nun pictures. Sister Mary Hilda Miley, real, real grouch, that nut. Lift up the picture to find the clue behind the nut, all right? That, that's the whole thing. Don't, you know, be careful with the picture. Don't break it. I don't want you to get anyone in trouble, all right? You don't, you don't want Grunkle Stan going to jail. Anyway, go to the place, look behind the nut, find the thing, um, and, uh, uh, and always be, look out for mysteries! So... Uh, Stan's message led them to the Ochre Court building of Salve Regina University in Newport, Rhode Island, which translates to God Save the Queen University. According to Stan, it was hidden behind a portrait of the nun Sister Mary Hilda Miley. But by the time people got to, uh, old Sister Mary Hilda Eeny Meeny Miney's portrait, it was not there. And there was a sign from the university staff saying... There is nothing to see behind the portrait of Sister Miley. If you would like to learn more about her in the university, please visit www.salve.edu. Attached is a picture of the Eye of Providence. So, when did you when did you find that out? That 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 was what was there at Sister Mary's picture? I happened to be visiting my girlfriend's family, uh, and her mom had like gone to this Catholic school when she was young, and they were they like, oh, let's take a look at this. And I just looking at this cool old weird building, I was like, oh, here's another perfect place for a clue ah. for the cipher hunt. Um, when we were still putting it all together. So some of these um, are very and, spur of you know, the moment. Uh, yeah, very spur of the moment. Okay. And and. They had said something there about how this place was just, like, open every day of the week, and it was sort of considered, like, now, like, almost like a state park. It's just this kind of thing that's, like, open all the time, and people come and go, and it, it seemed like there was no security and very lax and in the middle of nowhere. Um, and so I thought, oh, sweet, we'll just put this image uh, behind, um, you know, one, a particularly grumpy <laughs> nun in a particularly <laughs> remote like, So corner. you didn't talk to anybody. Um, You're just like, all right, I'm just going to put this here. No, there was definitely, again, I wasn't going to ask anyone for, like, again, how do you no, even start to right. explain? No, you're right, you're right. I trust that you sussed <laughs> it out. And I didn't even know the word ARG. Um, I didn't even know the word ARG, and I'm yeah. sure the nuns wouldn't. Um, definitely. So oh, no. So we discovered when the fans did that fans were, you know, some fan tweeted that image of, like, there's 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 no prize, and they're telling us to leave. Um, and so this is when I realized, okay, um, I think... Like, I was keeping track of what time it was on the East Coast. Like, on my phone, I had, like, set, like, different clocks for, like, oh what's gosh. the time in the East Coast? What's the time in Georgia? What's the time in St. Petersburg? What's the time in Japan? Um, <laughs> you were the man in the chair. <laughs> this really was National Treasure. Exactly like Wade in Kim yes. Possible. Ian would call me and say, what's the sitch? Um, <laughs> and then I would inform him that the sitch was, oh, God, the nuns found our clue That's before the fans did. to your we need the, the nuns. <laughs> According to my calculations, the hunt is dead, and from, I think, I think like we discovered that at like 5 in the oh, morning gosh. or something, our time, and between 5 a.m. and 12 noon California yep. time, we had created and hidden two new clues in our neighborhood in Los Angeles, and then changed the phone message to point to those clues instead, um, and... And we'd patch the hole. Well, well. first, uh, Mystery of Gravity Falls tweeted to return to what was and try again, uh, which people thought meant it was at the Shriners Temple in Atlanta. Um, so then uh, you tweeted Stan's phone number again, and we will play that message real quick. A man whose first name is his last, a statue honoring his past, right behind him by the sign of his park. A golden head shows light in the dark. I don't know what that means. 
but I don't have to go out there and figure this out. Wonder what's on TV. And that alludes to the Griffith J. Griffith statue at Griffith Park in Los Angeles. So yeah, at, at this at this point, I just was like, I literally Bring it down the street, was like <laughs> race race down the street because I lived close to that park back then, mm-hmm. um, and I happened to have this stan head that a fan had given me at a convention oh, and i wow. spray painted yeah i was gold wondering how you my, produced like, a golden grunkle stan head in that short amount of time just went yeah. to walmart said hey i need the key to get the spray paint i'm an adult <laughs> man <laughs> oh actually oh wait you know what no that that grunkle stan head i think had been actually cg modeled and printed by matt chapman um like Back back when we were on Gravity Falls, and I just had it oh, lying around. Oh wait, I know um, where that and, head was modeled because in the fake trailer for season two that Matt made, there is yes, that Matt made. There is a three D model of Stan's head that rotates randomly. So that must be the same. And it's model. this exact proportions. That's he really made that funny. CG head. He had printed it out to test his printer. I had one lying around. I raced, grabbed spray paint, spray painted, uh, took a clue, shoved it inside, raced to. And, you know, I hadn't come up with a, a plan or a rhyme or whatever. I'm just like, go to a place where I can hide something. I know that this is a public place and nobody's going to give me a mm-hmm. hassle for it. And then that didn't feel like it was enough. And Ian had pointed out that this, there's this odd, like, office park in Los Angeles that from above looks like. Bill Cipher, and he had told me about this, and he had proposed maybe we should hide a clue there back in the day, and we just never gotten around to it. So I just got a car and raced over there to hide an additional clue, Um, and then as soon as that was done, raced back home, tweeted, and then and the the additional clue (laughs) that's in line with your philosophy of we lost something, so we have to add two back. Yeah. Yes. If 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 we stole people's time and and effort, we have to not just make up for it, but also reward them yeah. extra for it. That makes the sense, though. That makes sense, and it, it it's it is it's a good move because you know that kind of reality getting in the way thing can certainly demoralize a lot of the hunters. But I think by giving them extra, you are re encouraging them. You're getting them back on the track. Uh, there was a code uh, placed within the. The Grunkle Stan head uh, with Griffith Griffith. Uh, 50 plus 50. That's the city. From one angle, it's quite pretty. You'll find a bow tie and one eye. At his head is a rectangle. Stones by stairs atop the top right angle. The stone with the UV swirl can glow. Find the black pouch that's below. That fifth clue, the the from the right angle, as in from the sky, uh... A park in Century City, Los Angeles, is trimmed into the shape of the Eye of Providence when viewed from above. 50 plus 50 is 100. Century. Ah. I really, I do like that the the little uh, two buildings underneath it do make the bow tie. Like, that's, that is such a great... Wait, when did you discover that? I mean, we, Ian... Like I said, my Swiss Army knife uh, superhero friend, he had, when we were trying to scout out locations for this, he had located this. He had just gone on Google and said, like, where are spots that look like Illuminati from the sky? And he had found this one. Um, And he had found it after we had sort of concluded everything. But it was like, oh, perfect. And that's in town, so I could make it a t-shirt. And Jason, you went to the search for this clue, didn't you? I did. I so I mean, I had been also refreshing Twitter and you know like with no obligation to like Alex. I just was so into it. I could not believe that he had set up a worldwide treasure hunt and I just was like what's going to happen? What are these clues? So you're just waiting for something to be geographically uh close by yes and then and then i missed i like i i can't remember if i was working or whatever but this was the first one that i could i could go to and i hopped in my car so <laughs> fast and got That's there amazing. someone else had already but you buckled your seatbelt we should i did buckle S&P my, I buckled my seat belt and uh yes exactly and, and I, S&P I had my booster that. seat and it was all great and your booster shot and my booster shots also very important um i got there and i was looking around with everybody they're all over there but i'm over here what if i find it first and um and ario was there too yeah, Ariel Hirsch. Yeah, it, it crazily enough, uh, the inspiration for Mabel, my twin sister, and the actual voice of uh, Dipper. Uh, so, so uh, uh, Mabel and Dipper kind of it's were there true. solving this. <laughs> um, Amazing, <laughs> which I was not expecting. Or maybe a marriage therapist and an actor. Uh, yes, and and this was being 
I, I didn't have any idea that Jason was going to be there. So I only discovered that fact when I saw him just suddenly show up on one of the random periscopes <laughs> that somebody was filming. You're like, wow, that guy looks an awful lot like Jason. Wait a minute. He looks minute. exactly like, I think that's yeah, I was not Jason prepared. Renner. <laughs> could not I could not stay home uh, and and then it, yeah it, my my journey with the cipher hunt did not end there so you showed up and then the fans were there and I imagine they were very excited that you hadn't shown up and and then Ariel showed up and no Robbies gave you dirty looks this time <laughs> exactly. so that same Robbie cosplayer was there uh, years and, older and he no he he handed you his guitar and was like. This is yours now. <laughs> I guarantee that if I saw that same Robbie cosplayer, I would have gotten the exact same that reaction same glare. That, yeah. <laughs> that I get from that guy. That there's no piece of information that was missing. Yeah, you'll be like, "Hey, I, uh, I voiced in your, I voiced the main character in your favorite show," and he'll be like, "So <laughs> he knew exactly who you were and still had contempt." I imagine the actual searching went went pretty fast. What was that moment like, though? Just you and and Ariel Hirsch and a bunch of fans just wandering around this park. Yeah, we were all looking around. Everyone was just looking around, and it was it was exciting too because it was like we all kind of knew who each other were but we were spreading out but there were also just like there were just people there it was during the day that, so they had no idea <laughs> yeah i mean that's the beauty of a of an arg is like that there's the people who are in the know and the people who are not but they exist on the same physical plane it's not the people who are inside on their computers because those people are now at, with the rest of society doing the thing well there, there was just random just businessmen walking around having lunch and then out of the bushes springs jason ritter <laughs> and, and he, a like, bunch opens, of opens cosplayers their case giggling. And looks, like where's the <laughs> <laughs> step aside and you were like i've solved a few gravity falls mysteries before you're in good hands <laughs> I also, I think I was wearing my, uh, my, my dipper hat, too. Oh, of, of course. course. You had to be in uniform. I can't remember <laughs> if I was in, like, full cosplay or if I just did the hat that day, but I was... I'd have I to double-check no the video. I no chill when it comes to any of that stuff. <laughs> so I'm just like, no. let's go all the way. So eventually, uh, eventually a, a black pouch was found that contained a, a USB drive with Bill on it. The top hey. right angle. <gasps> Oh my gosh! Wow, one swirly rock. That's insane. Oh my gosh! Guys, you guys yeah, got it. Is, it is a USB. Oh, it's a USB. Holy boogers! Oh, Bill. <laughs> the, uh, the other thing that was fun about the uh, the whole thing is like there'd be a group of us, but then. Once that thing was found, we all had to go home and just trust and that that one for person someone to upload it. Yeah. Was, yeah, and it was like it was, well, so, it was oh, so no one feeling. Okay. It was like so it wasn't like plugged. It wasn't like someone had their laptop, plug it in right then, and you and you heard it. You found it, and then someone just took it. Exactly. And when that was uh, plugged into a computer, there there was an audio file, which is my favorite part of this whole. No, same, thing. same. It, I want to. I... I let's play it first, and then we'll gush about it. Yeah. Howdy, treasure hunters. Grunkle stand here to tell you about the next clue. Whoa! Who are you? Hmm, it is me, Sister Mary Hilda Miley, and I decree that you shall never find the treasure. <laughs> um, some kind of ghost has flown into the mystery shack here. She's, um, uh, she's got a ruler and a ghost hand. Ow! Hey! I am the spirit of seriousness. I hate anything fun. Carbonated beverages, boys and girls holding hands at school dances, and most of all, I hate treasure hunts. Also, knuckles. Ow! Zeus, get the vacuum cleaner. Yes, sir, Mr. Pines. No! My one weakness, a creative solution. I'll be back. You'll never find the treasure! Good job, Zeus. Have a chicken nugget. To me, this is a raise. All right, kids, the next clue is a, a kind of tricky one. You see, this is one that can only be found by someone who is currently in the building it is hidden in. That's right. I'm looking for students at the California State Summer School of the Arts. Only CESA students can find this clue. I don't want anybody else going to CESA, all right? It's, you're not allowed in. Only students there are allowed in. Students, scour the sub-level. You'll know it when you see it. And watch out for Sister Miley's ghost! 
seriously. So, I love the idea of making the 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 nun that had stifled uh, one of the, the the fans' attempts into the antagonist of the cipher hunt. <laughs> and it's it's such a it's such a like whatever the opposite of diminishing returns is, like you said, Alex. Um, Demolishing. <laughs> Demolishing. Uh, oh, oh, oh! Wait, no, I got it. The opposite is minishing. Oh yes, of you're course. Right. Uh, like, like the cap, and it's like give them, give them this this new piece of lore, basically this mini episode in audio form, and it's so <laughs> not. It's it's so beyond like above and beyond like a Gravity Falls themed treasure hunt. It like is a Gravity Falls style script, which makes sense because so much of it is your own writing. Sister Mary Hilda Miley's theme music is the the. The ghost house from Super Mario World. And I love that Seuss's uh, method of defeating her is borrowed from Luigi's Mansion. Uh, Nintendo was kind of my big thing for, well, the majority of my life. And uh, it also reminds me of when we did uh, Irrational Treasure. We talked about uh, Teddy Roosevelt, You So Crazy. Which uh, you used uh, music from Mario Paint and Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest for. So it was like, oh, this is classic, classic, classic Alex. When you were legally allowed yeah. to do that stuff, those are those are some those are some very deep cuts. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, when if, if I'm up against a wall with a bayonet to my neck and I have to produce something, uh, it will it, it will involve Grunkle Stan's voice, Seuss's voice, and Mario music. Um, <laughs> Same, those yeah, are the... uh, for the most part. <laughs> That's what it sounds like in my head all the time. I mean, for so. me, it's Zelda music, but, you know. <laughs> and my favorite thing about it that I am realizing now because of what you said earlier about, uh, about S&P is that it seems like you're channeling a lot of those <laughs> frustrations into <laughs> Sister Mary Hilda Miley, who hates anything fun and she, creative. Yeah, because she is a nun, her motivation is that she hates fun. So she is trying to stop the cipher hunt because people are enjoying it. Which is exactly what you <laughs> were talking about being afraid of Disney doing to you. Yeah, well, it, it's, and I mean, this is like very, this is very like self-aggrandizing, highfalutin thought process here. But like, uh, it did sometimes feel working with Disney as though... I was, particularly with the legal and standards department, like instead of being a collection of people doing their job, it, it sometimes felt like an ancient force of apathy and bureaucracy, mm-hmm. like made manifest into like beings, like entering them like Calamity Ganon, that they're perfectly lovely people throughout their day. And then suddenly, thank this, you for this, the Calamity this sort Ganon of, reference. This, this <laughs> nun who hates fun and creativity enters their body and they are briefly possessed and they try to get in the way of fun, rewarding <laughs> oh, times for oh, the kids. So she she's kind of the, the killer Bob of the SP department. She possesses. Possesses yeah, ex- them every exactly. so often and makes them. <laughs> they do wake up from things. a fugue state and they say, "I don't know why I complained about this, but I had to for some reason." <laughs> and it's such a satisfying, like, way to make this totally unforeseen, uh, unfortunate happening of reality setting into this fun hunt, and and you know, uh, reconciling it with the rest of it and making it feel like not a a beat was skipped. That was that was the hope. Yeah, I know. I think it it really does its job because it feels so straight out of the show because it's it's such a a funny little script you know like if it was just it it goes beyond just being damage control i guess is really what so, i'm trying to say yeah so uh stan once again just tells them exactly where it is um as he did before which was at c s s s a they got a triple s rank yeah <laughs> the California State Summer School of the Arts campus, and you are very clear that non-students are not supposed to be wandering around those hallways. I appreciate the lengths you went to to make sure people did not get in trouble. Yeah. Th- that was, I mean, so the way this was supposed to go was lift up the nun, find the clue that leads you to this this art in the sublevel, which we had done, like, way far back. Um, Interesting. And which we had done before summer had begun and before CISA began and before the campus was closed. Um, Ian drew that himself. That's by the hand of the art director nice. of uh, wow. Gravity Falls himself doing that graffiti because 
uh, for for listeners, there's this special place at, at CalArts called the Sublevel. That's this sort of underground labyrinth um, that is just been covered in generations of art students' graffiti, and you're encouraged to draw over it over and over and over again. And I was actually there just about a month ago um, with a friend, and this is still up there. This clue drawn oh by gosh. Ian up, up, so up, up at the top. Nice. Did anyone? Yeah, ever... the, the students have left it alone. Did so anyone because... ever get no. Cask of Amontillado down there? I, hope. I don't know what that is. Uh, sealed behind a brick wall, yeah. and a- according to a story by Edgar Allan Poe. Horrible revenge story. Oh, gotcha. I mean, the the, the lore, the, like the CalArts lore was always that Walt Disney's frozen head is somewhere in the sublevel. Oh, that's that great. Was like, that makes sense. That was like our school's urban legend, so like this felt <laughs> like an appropriate place. Ella, did the NYC campus of- Of School of Visual Arts? Have any similar urban legends or no? Well, it's New York, so there's just- random people's frozen heads in the basement. That wasn't that remarkable. <laughs> we don't know how he got there. We yeah. don't really want to touch him. Hey, he probably stuck his nose in the wrong place, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, am I correct in that you specifically made it the summer school building because you knew the hunt was going to take place summer and you didn't want it in a non-active... Well, no, I guess they would have summer semesters even in the normal school. Uh, it, it just seemed to us like it was a place where we could write big graffiti, not get in trouble. Oh, and because that of that specific no one would, wall. Yes. Yeah, and that no one would notice it. Because the thought was like, it, this place is covered in random graffiti and symbols, and we could put something really specific up there and trust that it'll, it could be there for a while, and people will just yeah. assume a student did it. Yeah. And, I mean, technically? Ta- a student? An alum? <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's absolutely correct yeah. <laughs> me and ian first met as roommates at CalArts, so we had been then. here before so the graffiti has as bill cipher and hex codes that are encoded and when decoded form the coordinates uh that are located in piedmont california the hometown of dipper and mabel and their real life uh inspirations hey do you is it ever weird to you that so many people know your hometown and associate it with your work? Um, I mean, m- my hometown, to be blunt, uh, was basically historically a awful place of like millionaires and just I don't know, like segregation mm. in like the t- like I like Piedmont was probably like the most redlined town in America oh, when it was wow. like founded. Um, so I'm actually very happy that now people instead associate this like lovely little street with the cartoon that we made and not <laughs> with fair. like that's fair. This this horrible history of kind of just being this enclave of rich douchebags. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. You you improved the history of your town. Yeah, that was the hope. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Um, this this clue. So I was mentioning before how a lot of the clues were just where I had friends. Um, so this map was drawn by and clue was hidden by my mom. Um, oh, nice. <laughs> uh, and my mom is a wonderful woman. Uh, just have nothing but kind things to say about her. I will say this. Her ability to draw a map oh, no. <laughs> um, with clear directions is not her strong suit. Mm. And fans were so lost by this map <laughs> that they were wandering inside this park, like near my high school for so much longer than we expected. And I, I saw on Periscope a guy like slip on the rocks and like almost skin his knee. And I started to genuinely get worried. Oh, I remember that. I, I started to genuinely get worried. You can find that map in the uh, Google Drive folder that Shelby has made us. I have uh, pulled it up on screen share on Skype Thank here. You. There's oh, Alex's dear. mom's map. It's so cute. It's <laughs> Tree. so cute. Root. <laughs> path, path, path. Well, she tried so hard. <laughs> That's one way to denote a path according to the key. I, I love it. It's beautiful. I, like, it's so good. Tell your mother next time I need to make a map, she's commissioned. Like She's got cartography uh, in her future. As long as you don't want your treasure to be found, you can commission <laughs> my mom do, to make Alex. your map. I'm a pirate. <laughs> This works out flawlessly for me. All that matters is that you understand the map so that you can find your own treasure. I gotta where find it. it. The harder it is for other people to decode, the better. Right. So the um, this incorporated uh, the Waddles poster as well as some additional guidance from Alex because of the poster being very washed out. Uh, a cryptex that you had encased, which is a it's like a padlock but with um with letters and the. Instead of, like, locking a door, it locks a small object within it. It's very Da Vinci code. <laughs> yeah! Oh, it's another cipher. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Try waddles. Oh, that's so cool. No, it's five letters. <laughs> it's only five letters, guys, so it can't be waddles. Waddles is too long. Hmm. Using the, the keyword from uh, the original image of CypherQuest, pines. Pines! Pines! Pines, pines, pines. <gasps> oh my god! Oh, oh, right. I got it! Right here. Those pines! The cryptex 
opened a message uh, that re- read, LA has the clue you want, 1825 North Vermont, 27128 the box for thee. Don't be puzzled. Use the key. Yeah. Oh, it's a key. <gasps> it's a what? It's a key. Yeah. If I remember correctly, there was a physical key inside the physical cryptex inside the treasure chest hidden in Piedmont Park. So my mom had hidden a national treasure style cryptex inside a treasure chest inside the park near my high school inside, which was a key that opened up a PO box in Los Angeles. And this this was by design because we assumed that this t- that this entire hunt would go insanely fast. So we started trying to think of ways to slow it down. One of which mm, was if someone has to physically transport a key, that'll add a day yes. to a hunt. So um, were you and the one who loaded the P.O. box? Uh, I was, yes. So then you sent the key to your mom, and then she put it in the... Sent the key yeah. to my mom, she put it in the treasure chest, and yeah. uh, and this was... like Because Ian and I were discussing how long do we think this whole thing is going to take. And, you know, we wanted it to take... We thought too fast and it won't be satisfying too long, and it increases the likelihood that keys will get damaged or lost. Yes. And the likelihood that fans will get damaged or yeah. lost. Yeah. <laughs> so w- yeah. we wanted to keep the thing. Wait, how far is LA from Piedmont? Um, it's 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 a it's an hour hour and a half flight or uh, like a five hour drive. Okay. Um, so this key had to be brought five hours without being lost yeah and i think at this point it is july i want to say like 23rd 22nd because the nun half the nun thing was on the 21st Uh, 23rd yes so okay we're we're on we're on day three or four or so uh, at this point and yes that person with the key took the several hour drive traveled to the p.o box opened the p.o box and out tumbled a plastic bag containing 2,000 jigsaw puzzle pieces. And I think, Jason, you were at this one. I was, yeah, I had come back. And I believe there was a thing where, like, when we first got there, the post office was closed or closing. There was, like, a big negotiation. Oh, no. And, like, a whole group, you know, like, maybe at this point, like, 20 or 30 I'm Talking of to us. the post office worker, like, okay, so you know Hannah Montana? Yeah. Okay, you know Disney Channel? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Exactly. Well, good thing that is the worst thing that would ever happen in their profession. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh. Um, the P.O. box also contained an envelope with a drawing of Bill saying, I hope you like puzzles in code. Just a little insult to injury. <laughs> I forgot about that. The horrible um, nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's hear about your, your account of this jigsaw puzzle, Jason. We've only seen video of the puzzle you were down in the trenches jason yeah you were born in it molded by it i i saw the bag um come out of the p.o box i was right there oh my god oh my god <laughs> and i was so excited and as useless as i was trying to find that pouch with the usb earlier in century city i was like oh a puzzle a jigsaw puzzle no less this is where i shine they should work out together i don't think there's enough room in my house we were trying to figure out where we could do it and it was like should we go to somewhere in someone's house and then it was like how creepy is this gonna get <laughs> we didn't know like, were you about to get <laughs> then, miseried jason <laughs> right exactly so the, luckily someone and it was found done in, a place. in a comic shop somewhere was it yeah, the, there was a comic shop in the valley that allowed all of us um, passionate people to come in and just work at this table whenever we could. So there was like shifts. People would come in, you know, obviously at a certain point, the comic shop would close, but it would open. We would file in. People would just leave the daily grind. You clock whatever. in, you do the puzzle, you clock out. Wasn't it like a significant uh, place for you, Alex? Or was that a different This just place? happened to be a place that someone yeah, found, the, I think. At this point, it was in the fans' hands. This was when I mentioned before the uh, desire to figure out a way to slow down the treasure hunt when me and Ian had been planning. Oh, yeah. This is that. I came up with, well, what, what if there's a jigsaw puzzle? That That's something that has to be physically built. That would take a while. And I'm no good with numbers. So I said, Ian, you choose how many pieces it is. And oh, Ian man. is the one who oh, designed Lord. this and decided it would be 2,000 pieces. Uh, and and it, is, uh, it is Bill on a yellow background. Not a different yellow. The same yellow as Bill. Yellow lines on a yellow background. And there are also just 
random uh, lines to resemble shapes that might be in Bill just around him. Yeah. It was devious, and I think the one flaw of someone who is as hyper-competent as Ian is, is he assumes other people are like him. So this (laughs) is something that would be a moderate challenge for him, but would be a nightmare for normal human beings to work on. Yeah, right. I mean, it did what it was supposed to do. It slowed it down. It did what it was supposed to do so much more than it was supposed to do it, and him and I both started to panic as we realized this is taking a really long time. We have all these random fans of different ages hanging out, working in shifts, basically doing, like, child labor (laughs) to try to solve this puzzle. And, And that's when we started to get worried that you know, what if this takes too long? What if somebody, what if some of the yeah. pieces go missing? Is it going to peer um, out? And it, it, we did get a little concerned at this point, um, but we were also blown away. I, I think we recognize that it stopped being fun. Like <laughs> yeah. 700 pieces into 2000 pieces. Everyone is, they've gone from the high of, Oh my God, I'm participating in the cipher hunt to I am doing a chore. Well, and the other thing was that while all of us, Los Angeles cipher hunters, uh, you know, when, when the cipher hunt was in another country or another state, we were voraciously, you know, watching and waiting for the next upload and all of these things. So we were all very well acquainted with how much people were waiting for the next update from us. And we, and, but we, you know, it was like the first couple steps were organizing. And so we're like, all right, we have, we did Bill Cipher's eye first because it was white. And then it was like, yeah, now we have, yeah. we have two piles of yellow with a black line through them, and then just y- pure yellow. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm getting a headache just hearing about it. The ones with the little black like lines, you could sort of try to match angles, but we also, they were symbols, so we didn't know like w- what they were supposed to be. We were just like, this is generally the right I mean, did you do the angle? classic start, start with, with the borders? borders. Yeah, yeah. Is that- of course. Well, we, yeah. we started with the borders, which was very helpful. But then there was just a sea of yellow pieces, which would be like basically taking a jigsaw puzzle, flipping it upside down so you can't see any picture at all, and just trying to match based on shape. Except that's the picture. That's what you're supposed to but the see. But th- the fun thing was everybody was super into it. Everyone was... It actually allowed more people to be involved in it because it took so long. People could show up. So more people ended up having a hand in it and being a, a part of it. But I could also, as towards the end, I could see some infighting start to happen. And so, yeah, there a little were nervous. Oh, yeah. basically daily uh, Periscope streams of all of you trying to solve this puzzle. And uh, there was a fan uh, who was living in Portland who wasn't able to participate, who had been keeping up with the Periscope streams and was just going for a walk and <laughs> happened to see a gnome that just kind of happened to match with some of the clues that had sort of been revealed from what was completed mm. of the puzzle. Yeah, uh, I guess that's that's always inherently a risk, right? With a yes. with a puzzle where the pieces are already all there in the real world, and it's kind of a miracle that it didn't yeah. happen until this point, really. We were grateful that this happened. That's true, that's true. It was a saving yeah. grace but in a way. We still continued that puzzle after the cipher hunt moved on. It became like our white whale. Well, because Alex gave an incentive, right? You said that uh, if the puzzle was completed, you would reveal the the unaired pilot, the pitch pilot oh, you that's right. produced for Disney. Well, and again, this just comes from this reward concept of what was supposed to be fun was starting to become a hassle, and then people had leapfrogged over it onto the next clue, but mm-hmm. there was still a puzzle unfinished. Um, so I was like, what What do I have lying around that could possibly be considered a reward? I had never planned on uploading the Gravity Falls pilot. Yeah, you had said on multiple occasions you would never release it. My desire to not show that was eclipsed by my my desire to make this puzzle hunting worth the time and effort of the people who had worked on it. So, uh, and you know, the, the reason that we never played the pilot on air is like that was never internal pilots. They have sound effects and music that you don't own. You're just using scratch music. You're just using whatever mm-hmm. you've got in your iTunes in 2011. You have uh, summertime just straight up plays during the montage. Yeah, because these are just these sort of internal pitch documents, you know. So from a legal point yeah. of view, they're never meant to be outside anywhere. Um, but again, at this point, mm-hmm. I'm like, my concern for Disney's legal department, my concern for, uh, you know. Humanity. The well-being of the fans, yeah. Right. So we, I, I added that to just try to make 
make it worth the effort of all the poor uh, fans who were still working on this. What they had dubbed as puzzle hell was what this era was referred to. Oh, it took a few days for for the image that it's supposed to look like for you to even uh, post that. So it's not like they had a, a box that the Im- that the puzzle came in, so they know what they're nope right yeah. They did not know I that will for say a few days. That when you found a, a, a yellow piece that fit with a na- another yellow piece, <laughs> it was like euphoria. <laughs> it was like- <laughs> no drug will get you higher. The light of God shone down on you like Blues Brothers. Yeah. Jason's been chasing this high ever since. There's no way he'll ever feel <laughs> yes. this again. You start to feel like, I think I've seen a piece that's some like kind of this shape. Still to this day, when you close your eyes, all you see is yellow. Yeah, it's basically. burned into your retinas. And there was also a virtual puzzle. Uh, the incentive to complete that from Alex uh, was, was unreleased scenes from the actual show. And the virtual puzzle was another improvisation where we started to worry this is taking too long fans figured out a way to make a like, oh, we worked with a fan to figure out a way to make a virtual puzzle because we wanted more people to be able to collaborate um so there was a lot of just yeah. like on the fly if, if we hit a snag if a clue goes missing or if it turns out to be too hard or if my mom's map is confusing there was always like <laughs> I, I can always as the you know i've never played dungeons and dragons but i imagine that the role of a dungeon master is to sort of be a, a receptive to a live story that's happening around them so th- that was the best that we could do yeah no you nailed it that's exactly Exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah, because it's it's improv. The physical puzzle uh, was finally completed on August first, and then it was uh, signed and displayed, I believe, in that store. <laughs> and then the store went to hang it up, and then oh, <laughs> oh my god! Oh my, that actually <laughs> at least they would have the signature to like just make the... it a little easier. <laughs> when I visited, I was watching live on Periscope as they were completing the puzzle. I saw that they had you know probably ten minutes to go, so I quickly drove out to the place, oh, hit nice. out outside, watching them on Periscope outside the door. <laughs> I'm shaking. <laughs> and the second they clicked it in, I ran in there, waved, That's amazing. signed the thing. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! How about a round of applause so yeah. here yes. for completing the world's oh my god. most miserable puzzle. <laughs> oh my god. Who are you insane people? Why did you do this with your evening? <laughs> Thanks to these... Brave, insane people. I will be posting the Gravity Falls unaired pilot on the internet. Yes! Very soon. I never thought I was going to do it, but you guys have earned it. It's weird. You might not care for it, but you earned it. Hey, guess who's here? Step right up to the mystery (laughs) chef, folks. There you go. go. Alright, stuff to sign. Stuff to sign. Two hashtag cypher hunters. I gotta sign stuff and then run before more people show up. That's magic. Because again, I was just like, these poor kids, they're gonna do this miserable task, and then what's done is they did it, and then they sit there. I was like, I need to give them something. So I came up. Enhance the reward. I signed every single thing I could. I came really close to when I was signing the puzzle, stealing a piece and trying to hide it. <laughs> I think a lot of people tried to do that, as I um, recall. But it's trying to make that as fun as it could be. Um, but oh yeah, so then then the next one was the gnome in Oregon. Yes, and that had a viewmaster under it. Ooh, remember you those? can print your own viewmasters online, guys. It's so cool. You can. That's amazing. My question is: a lot of our listeners are like eighteen. Do we have to contextualize a viewmaster? Okay, so the viewmaster is a pair of sort of binoculars that ha- and and you put a. a sort of a film reel disc. Uh, and film is, uh. well, film is a substance that when exposed to light, you know what, this is going to take too long. Just Google what it means. <laughs> so uh, it contained several images, including, but not limited to, the waterfall from the intro to Twin Peaks, and um, also depicted uh, Confusion Hill in... Mendocino County, California. Uh, there was a clue inside the gnome as well that said, To the Redwoods you must race. If you're confused, you're in the right place. The gift shop is not too far. The password will buy you the eyeball jar. And confused is notably capitalized, which is a helpful hint to the next clue being in Confusion Hill. Which, uh, was this during, um, the big road trip you went with the crew that you placed it there or did you go back there or was there this was far later so um ian and i had taken a trip 
to the general Pacific or, uh, you know, Northern California, Southern tip of Oregon, Northern tip of uh, California to hide a number of clues ourselves. So we hid the one with the gnome. We hid uh, this one and we talked to the folks at Confusion Hill saying, can you hide a jar of eyeballs and only give it to someone if they pay with stamp? Like they were in cahoots on it. Uh, so we did that at, at this time. Great. Yeah. Well, I imagine um, you were amazing publicity for similar tourist traps. I, I think they were catching wise to the fact that like because they're just a bunch of grunkle stands who are you know anything they could think of to get people to come to this place so they were very <laughs> friendly and collaborative and and eager for anything that would get more cars to drive in their direction i love it <laughs> so the end of that clue that says the password will buy the eyeball jar harkens back to the stand bucks that were in the P.O. box, right? Yes. Okay. And I, I know that Gravity Falls Cipher is, like, noted in the wiki. Uh, did you get some of those things from him? Because I, like, the blacklight pen and the statue and the stand bucks, he is notorious for giving those out at cons. Yeah, the fan known as Gravity Falls Cipher is the guardian angel of the Gravity Falls fan universe. Yeah. Um, the, the most hardworking, passionate, endlessly capable and available fan who creates merchandise and goes to conventions and will it just sort of appeared in my life one day as this like magical fairy on my shoulder that could grant wishes for me. Um, and I figured it's better to have someone with these degree of powers on my side. Um, yeah. uh, you know, cause I powerful ally, very powerful ally. So we would utilize uh, his powers whenever humanly possible. And w he always delivered above and beyond. I, I still can't believe he's real. He is amazing. I, like <laughs> for some reason, Anytime I go to a con, because he's he lives in my area. Oh wow! Every time I go to a con, people come up and they go, "Hey, do you has Shelby been here? Do you know Shelby?" Because everybody <laughs> in my amazing. area knows. Like the reason they watch Gravity Falls is because I was like, "Hey, have you watched Gravity Falls yet?" So everybody in my mm -hmm. convention circuit in the southeast is like, "Has Shelby been here yet?" <laughs> oh but right, because they see Gravity Falls and they think they think of you. me. Of course, as they should. The first time I met him was at like a convention in North Carolina. This guy came up, said, "I." I like your dipper costume and i was like oh thanks he handed me some stand bucks and um and like a postcard and i looked up and he was gone and i was like <laughs> yeah. what just happened i imagine when i picture him speaking i imagine him speaking in a voice that is like a digitally altered deepened voice but that's just how he talks all the time like hey are you shelby are <laughs> i've you? never met him he is a phantom that's why i picture him like that. wait shelby has met him multiple times he also has a video of sh no yeah he tweeted a video of shelby doing, doing the, the lammy, lammy dance. dance yeah who wants a lammy 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 I do. I do. Oh my god. <laughs> this guy is like the deepest lord of Gravity Falls is this like He's secret... at the bottom of the iceberg. He yes, is. is the secret member of our team and he's a very important part of the Gravity Falls fan community that is even a mystery to me. Maybe he was Reddit user Blendin Blandin. Quite possibly. <laughs> I've been trying to talk them into getting him on the show because like he's one of my favorite people. I talk to him on Twitter pretty often. I think he tweeted my collector cosplay and it like drove people crazy That's like the right. day after yeah. yeah like the day after the owl house finale yeah but like he's he i talk to him all the time so if you guys want him on the pod i can probably get him on here Heck yeah i would i would listen to that episode because i want to know because <laughs> you've never how heard his voice I, I I may have I think I might have heard his voice briefly once as part of some back and forth. We might have talked on the phone, gotcha. but I've never I've never met him. I've never seen him, and and I don't truly understand like what why, why he has these resources. Why does he? Why and how does he do all this? He might be Banksy. He might be Q. I don't know what his story <laughs> is. He might be DB Cooper. He might be all three. Banksy yeah. is DB Cooper. And <laughs> He lives in uh, Shelby's area. Yeah, yeah. That's, that explains a lot. We learn a lot. Yeah, today. he's he's he is wonderful. I'll send him a message on uh, Twitter real quick. Although although our uh, our listeners think that Robert Zetti is DP Cooper. I mean, he has the same dashing good looks and roguish. That's what uh, I was thinking. Demeanor, yeah, yeah. mischief, exactly. Uh, so to in order to quote unquote buy the jar of eyeballs, they had to say the password, which was Philbrick, which was the word written on invisible ink on the back of the stand bucks. Deepest lore. Deepest lore. 
Thank you, Cease. <laughs> and the tenth clue is written underneath the jar of eyeballs. So, did you make the jar of eyeballs? Did Ian craft the jar of eyeballs? Was this another fan gift? Were they fans' eyeballs that they had donated to you at various conventions? I was tasked with harvesting the eyeballs. Uh, okay, <laughs> well, because you've got those dashing eyes. Did you eyes. use a melon baller? Or, uh... <laughs> yeah. Actually, surprisingly, melon ballers damage the eyes uh, more than you would imagine. Oh. I'm pretty sure that that jar of eyeballs came from a physical set that they built of the Gravity Falls Mystery Shack oh, gift yes, shop. Oh, yes, 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 the D23 set. Um, and we used that set at D23 yes. and also to film some like uh, some promos with the Grunkle Stand puppet. The convention at which I met you was in that set. Yeah, okay. Ella, Ella uh, and I know I know you will not remember this, but uh, asked you in Seuss's voice what blanching means, and then you responded as Seuss. So <laughs> I saw you, you saw me, you saw the eyeballs, the eyeballs saw you in that moment. <laughs> I felt very seen in that moment by many, many eyeballs. That is why two of the eyeballs in there uh, look like Ella's because those eyeballs, they remember. Yeah. They, they, that's the one thing they say about eyes. <laughs> that's what they're capable of doing, remembering. Eyes are the part of you that remembers. Wait, yeah. which part am I thinking of? <laughs> when you lifted the jar, on the bottom of the jar, written uh, on duct tape, it said, where has my grunkle gone to Stanley Street in Oregon? A telephone pole is where he's at. Why do you have to bolt like that? And bolt was underlined. Thanks, Dipper. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> interesting. Yes. Very interesting. It was. I found it interesting. Interesting. I have a question for the panel. Can you tell me how to get how to get to Stanley Street? <laughs> <laughs> Close your eyes and think about the one you love most. Well, that works for you, Seuss. That because, works for Seuss. Yeah, that that might not apply to everyone, Seuss. You understand? <laughs> yeah, Stanley. My, many people love other people more than they love Stanley Pines. I don't know if you've heard about this. <laughs> that, that can't be true, dude. <laughs> that's impossible. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to find out this way, Seuss. I'm sorry. No, nah, that's a funny joke though. But he's the most loved man alive. It's true. You're right. You got <laughs> us. You got us. You're right. I got you. We were just joking. So people went down to to Stanley Street in Oregon. In Amity, Oregon, uh, unrelated. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Coincidence. Yes. And found, uh, I guess this is another one of those um, pop it open and there's a scroll inside thingies. No, was, I think this was a geocache bolt, which is a yes. Is it's a little bigger. This wasn't the same as the bolt that you did in Russia, right? Okay. This was when they were like, "What's this?" Ah! And I just threw it behind them in the dirt. <laughs> this was the most stressful moment of the entire hunt for me and Ian because we were watching the live periscope of this and things. We had finally gotten out of puzzle hell. We were in the end zone. We were ready to see this come together. And yep, I will we're say in that things were starting to get a little tense in the fan community because what started as just a fun, exciting time. Because of some of the pauses, but also because of the momentum. I remember the puzzle was the turning point. The, yeah. the puzzle was the point where there started to be impatience, and I became aware of the fact that there was a little bit of a um, rivalry mm -hmm. between is Tumblr going to find it first? Is Reddit going to find it first? Is Twitter going to find it first? Or God, God forbid, forbid 4chan <laughs> going to find it first? Um, and, you know, the, the positive thing, it turned out, is that those guys don't leave their basements. Um, oh, and there was a... <laughs> Yeah, me worried there. Sometimes they leave their basements, but it's to transition. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. Yeah. And then they never return. Yeah. They're like basement. They're yeah. like, why did I need all of that misplaced anger? <laughs> so, but there was a tension of we want this to be found soon and by a happy group of Gravity Falls fans and not by trolls or antagonists or anybody who's trying to break mm -hmm. this thing. Right, not for the sake of competition just for communal joy because we finally had enough attention on this thing that there were people that are like i want to find that statue and i want to break it in half i want to find it and i want to pull it away and never tell anybody you know mount it over my fireplace me exactly um <laughs> so we were we were ready to get this thing going and we were watching live on periscope and we saw someone find the little screw which we had hidden inside a telephone pole chuck it over their shoulder say that's oh. nothing and keep looking oh. and then we were like, uh-oh, that thing is really hard to find. It's starting to get dark. What do we do? So I just started, like, frantically tweeting, like, more rhyming couplets that just said, like, <laughs> the word bolt in them. You just um, gotta, just, just, they're getting very blatant, like, uh-oh, like, you gotta do the screw. You yeah, got the bolt. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, it's, uh, it would be nuts if you guys bolted. Uh, don't <laughs> screw it up. Look down, you clown. There's uh, there's some more Banjo-Kazooie references for you. Uh, <laughs> I just started making Gruntilda sounds. And 
She sounded like the hand witch, actually. Um, um, but uh, oh. yeah, yeah, so like, and we were, we were like, our hearts were in our throat when we watched that because we genuinely uh. thought like, oh, geez, we're going to have to hide another clue somewhere else. But again, it was like, these people are all out here right now. And at this point, it had gotten enough momentum that what you described, Jason, which is as you were building the puzzle, it wasn't just, I want to finish this because it's fun. You knew the entire fan community was watching and waiting for you to finish it. Exactly. And you could feel their tension knowing that they were being watched. So thankfully, they did find it in the dirt, unscrew it, and find the final clue to the the clue to the final clue. I found this clue twice. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't believe this. Oh my god. I have tweezers in my purse. Maybe I can try to get it. Where's your purse? This is a historical moment. Oh, that's six too big. Thank goodness. That clue was, Roger Tofton knows the place, behind a sign, buried at the base, near Pa's laundry on the hill, here lies the bones of a man named Bill. Mm. So, uh, just a quick Googling of Roger Tofty will tell you that he created the Enchanted Forest Amusement Park in Turner, Oregon. It's the best place in the world. That it's, sounds amazing. It's ama- It's this one dude in, like, the 60s or something, Roger Tofty. He was just, I'll make my own Disneyland, dagnabbit. And he, he did. Um, and it's just been him and his son running this thing for years. And it's all these spooky looking like um, images that we had actually been inspired by when we created Gravity Falls, but I had never been there of just like, you know, Humpty Dumpty made in plexiglass that's just worn and weathered by years of rain and moss and is, everything there looks like a creepypasta. Wow. Um, and it's it's so much fun. They've got their own sort of ripoff of the Matterhorn that's just, you know, made by guys in the woods with their own wrenches. And you really feel like you might die when riding it. Um, and me and Ian went there with no idea. What, we had a clue, but we didn't know we were where we were going to hide it. And as we were walking around, we saw a sign that was part of part of Roger Tofty's Enchanted Forest wow. that said, here lie the man's bones of a man named Bill, second fastest draw in Toftyville. I guess that's what Roger Tofty referred to. There was references to Roger Tofty everywhere. I love rhyming uh, tombstones. I think those need to come back because I only ever see them in Monkey Island. And Haunted Mansion. But yeah, we were completely blown away to discover a rhyming sign with the words, here lie the bones of a man named That's Bill. Amazing. So even though it was beyond a fence and technically someone would have to hop the fence to get to it, it was a very short fence and it was like in the middle of like a kind of gardeny area and we just said, ah, screw it. Let's bury this thing just here. Go, it's too uh, perfect. Just go over that garden fence, you know? Yeah. <laughs> in a way. Just go over the garden hop fence. Yeah. Hop over the garden <laughs> fence. Exactly. Yeah. That, that was an idea that that uh, you got in St. Petersburg because uh, the person staying with you was like, hey, what about over the garden fence? <laughs> and I said, oh, I'm going to remember that. And if I see a garden fence above it, I will hop. He was like right, angrily <laughs> writing down titles like over the garden fence. Nah, that's nothing. <laughs> and, and then you were like, hold on. That might Tome be- of the Unknown, that's nothing. <laughs> you know, I, I called him up and I said, hey, you know that show you're working on, Tome of the Unknown? You're trying to come up with a title? Well, listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> you held the phone to a yeah, garden I wall. I held the phone <laughs> up to a garden wall. And he said, that sounds like a garden wall. And I said, your kids will love it. And that is only something only Pat can do. Most oh, people yeah. can't tell what type of wall they're listening to over the phone. Yeah, the adults at the time weren't ready for it. The kids. <laughs> Um, our, our, our apologies to all people listening through this like twelve car riff pileup. <laughs> that's all this podcast is. You, uh, that, that's every episode. It's, okay, I'm starting have, to understand. We've cultivated an audience of exclusively people who are into that, so don't even worry. <laughs> so in the enchanted forest, underneath the sign, the clue had apparently uh, been taken by someone before the the main uh, people that were being tracked got there. My recollection was that. There were several families who were periscoping live. Once the bolt had been unscrewed, the final clue had been revealed that it was going to be an enchanted forest. A bunch of families hopped into their SUVs yeah. and they, you know, oh, this is Cypher Hunting Dad 47. I'm here with my own <laughs> Little Dipper and Mabel. You had created your own mad, 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 mad world <laughs> yes. slash rat race. <laughs> it yes. had become an absolute rat race uh, slash mad world. Um, and so there was... A few of them that were periscoping who got there. And I remember this one guy, shout out to you, sir, if you ever hear this. I remember this one guy watching him live, seeing him see the sign. There it is! Manny Bill! Manny Bill! And then you hear him running and you sort of see his legs. It's like very Blair Witch. And, yeah. and then you see the sign. And then he gives his phone to his friend. And then you see an angle of him saying, oh, it's, it's behind the fence. I'm sure it's no big deal. And he climbs over and he just, he scoots a little dirt beyond the fence, you know, next to the sign where the prize should be and he doesn't find it and i watching it realize oh gosh someone got to it first and he mm. says 
I need to start digging. And so he starts oh, no, up, no. up to his elbow, just digging and digging. And I'm like, oh, no, no. <laughs> so, again, I have to race to do a tweet like, um, hey, uh, uh, g- g- can you dig it? Maybe stop. <laughs> Someone else has found the the stop. Um, I, I'm running out of impish glee here, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I, I feel like if this hunt had gone five clues deeper, like, somebody would have died. Um, but luckily... <laughs> Someone, the person who did find it, even though they hadn't periscoped themselves, they did post to, I believe, Reddit or, or Twitter. Oh, good. Thank Here it is. Goodness. We didn't have to recreate that clue. And that clue was the final one. So we were glad that All right. uh, whoever took that photo was the person who found it. Shelby, what was that final clue? Return to where it all began. The final clue is in your hand. The parchment can be such a tease. The answers written in the trees. Oh, I now, forgot about this. Was so now cool. this was this was written on a a piece of ripped paper, which is an anagram for dipper paper. Hey, <laughs> <it's> true. <laughs> <laughs> Thank but, you. Uh, Finally, uh, on the reverse, Shelby, want to tell us about what that piece was? So there was a map that's slightly more distinguishable than the earlier map. <laughs> yes, the, there was a map that was made by Ian Worrell and not Alex's mom uh, <laughs> that connected with the original image where mm-hmm. it was torn to form one full map. Yeah, and that confused a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> thought they were going to have to go back to Russia. So uh, Alex tweeted, an urban legend arcade game gives the method's correct name. Mathematically, the letters hide in branches and knots, no matter the size. Because a lot of people were thinking, like, maybe it's something to do with the trees in the image, etc. Wait, did Ian Worrell just expect people to know the Polybius Square? Or So, m- much like the uh, puzzle where I said, like, Ian, I- I'm outsourcing to you the job of figuring out how hard this should be. When it came to the final clue, I said, I, I don't know how to come up with something that we need a super, super hard cipher yeah. for the end. And Ian came back to me and he said, okay, I figured out there's this crazy thing and I can it, it, it comes from patterns with ones and twos and, and, and I can use it I can encode it in an image if you know what to look for but if you don't, no one will ever ever find it because no one would ever wow. think to count branches and knots and holes on the sides Amazing. of drawings of trees um, and I didn't understand a damn word of it but I did understand <laughs> the beautiful symmetry of the idea that the final answer was in the first image all along. I loved that, and yes. I was so stoked. And I loved the fact that the coolest thing to me was that what looked like a ripped piece of parchment in the first image we uploaded, that wasn't a random rip in the corner. That was the tree line from Google Earth traced of mm-hmm. what that forest oh looks like. Oh, my God, yes, that's right. Um, because it looks totally random, but it's not. Yep. And that it that it references a real-life urban legend as well, very on on. Well, scene. it references actually an urban legend the most famous urban legend from Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so I was like, I was like, thematically, this is great. I don't understand a damn word of it. <laughs> Ian put it together. Um, and it, it was, it definitely took the fans a while to solve this one. There was so many butting heads and arguments. And I, I can't remember. I just saw it on Reddit. Somebody's like, I, I feel like my guess, because like whoever did this didn't take like credit for it. Like, I don't know who it was, kind of like the person who found that last clue, but they just like dropped it like putting down like a beautiful poker hand. What like- they did was they they found uh, they they tried to figure out how many uh, spaces should be in the Polybius board and eliminated knots and branches based on that and the poem, and then found every town in Oregon that was the correct number of letters and eliminated the one where uh, shared sequential letters were not correct also assuming that it ended in or i i don't understand any of this stuff and like my hunch honestly is that this had finally left the fandom bubble of gravity falls and begun to enter the fandom bubble of like real like cia code cracker hobbyist guys i looked at those trees for hours (laughs) <laughs> so now you, when you blink you see puzzle pieces and trees <laughs> yeah, yeah just... you've completely traumatized your your lead voice actor alex i hope you know but it was so fun because i knew that there was an answer that was the that was always the fun part is that there yes, was yeah. an answer you just had to you're figure not you're it not out. getting jj abrams here. right you're exactly. actually leading to something from assuming that the last two letters were or they were able to just figure out that only one town in in Oregon had the right amount of letters, had an or o r towards the end, and had two sequential letters at the front, and that brought them to Reedsport, Oregon. And to just post that anonymously is so admirable and so yeah. in the 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 
true spirit of Cypher Hunt, I feel, not the the competitive spirit that was starting to develop. But... Ella? Ella, what is Cypher Hunt really about? <laughs> well, Virginia, there is no Bill <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, you, uh, should you should have seen, seen the, the look, look on your, your face. face. It's about the deer's teeth we mutilated along the <laughs> yes. way. Yeah, of course. Exactly. A, a, a tiny sleigh and eight tiny toothless reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, they got their teeth back eventually. All they wanted for Christmas, really. With their two front teeth, their incisors, their molars. <laughs> All of their teeth, yeah. <laughs> I, I remember like when... They were searching the the video of the final search. Was oh, so I remember that. That's burned in my brain. Terrifying. Yes, <laughs> and the finding it because it was at night. I think yes, the 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 sun was down. It was dark, and it was just a bunch of periscopes of fans just racing around uh, Reedsport, around wow. uh, the woods that match the the cutout at the edge of the first image, trying to follow. Uh, the dotted line to the X. Oh my gosh. So what was that like, Alex? Are you watching that? It had all built up to this and I was, the things, you know, on my scale of concerns, the worst case scenario was someone gets eaten by a bear or a meth addict. Or a meth addicted or bear. Or a methamphetamine addicted <laughs> bear, yeah. Yeah, one of those meth bears that are so prevalent in Reedsport. <laughs> or it's, it, you know, the wrong person finds it and they just dig it up and take it home and don't tell anyone or it's anticlimactic and I, mm-hmm. I could not have asked for a better finale to this. It was this picture perfect moment where one girl found it. There it is. There it is. Oh my god. Oh my god. I found it. Holy oh shit. Oh my god. Ah! Ah! Okay, sorry. That was really loud. But I found it. Oh my god, guys, I found it. And she she took a quick picture and, and texted everyone, like, meet me here. And there was a periscope that was the one that, like, all the fans were watching live of this family, like, in the woods with a flashlight as it was getting dark, trying to find her finding it and it was it was exactly who you'd hope it was a family dressed as as you know with a little baby and a kid dressed as mabel and somebody dressed as grunkle stan and and there was the girl who had found it herself and all together they they dug up the treasure chest (laughs) Uh, uh, what is it (laughs) treasure (laughs) oh my goodness and they found all the like all the little prizes and trinkets and it was all caught on tape there's coins. like plastic coins, there's actual. Fake mo- uh. not, that's real money, it's Russian. <laughs> that's Japanese. <laughs> and a crown. Nice. <laughs> oh. Oh my gosh. It just felt like such a victory for. Like, we were all telling a story together. Um, and I was just an article of faith that it might have a satisfying ending. At that point, it, it was did. in the hands of the fans. Yeah. Um, and it was the fans who loved it most were the fans who would do right by it and make that a special moment. Uh, Mayor of Gravity oh, Falls. Oh, okay, I think she gets it, right? She yeah, the one who actually first. found it. So. Yeah, she'll get that one. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. The first person to find the statue is apparently to this day still at official gf mayor on twitter yes because uh there was a sash that said mayor of gravity falls that... passed on from alex himself that used to be your your bio yeah on twitter yeah that that's right um again i'm all about rewards so we try to figure out okay it's going to be a physical treasure chest it's going to have a copy of journal three which was is just coming out now so nobody has it it's going to also have a sign drawing by me which if you use a black light it lights up it's going to have an audio recording from grunkle stan We'll meet again, don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. (coughs) Oh, my esophagus. Hey, guys, congratulations on finding my uh, mysterious treasure of the, the statue in the forest. Um... This is it. This is, you reached the end. You really did it. You really, you looked for it and you found it. And, um, now it's yours. Uh, you know, if you were hoping for some kind of, like, you know, like a cash prize, you know, I can't blame you, but the real, the real treasure is the journey and the friends you made along the way. In case you don't have any friends, in which, you know, at least you got some exercise. Um, anyway... You know, take a picture with the statue. Shake his hand. That's kind of like a prize. And uh, 
tell everybody how you you did it first. That makes you the best. Also, you know, if other people helped you, give them some of the gold plastic coins. Share their wealth. Anyway, congratulations. I'm Grunkle Stan, and as I always say, no refunds. It's gonna have fake gold coins and a, and and a fake crown and a sash. It was like everything I could possibly think of, and currency from countries we visited, um, and the and the music box which plays the theme. What? Is it a music? Uh, it's, it's a, a music, music box. box. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! What is? What's the map? It's another. Oh. Oh, oh. It looks like it's. Is that oh, check black light or something? It is a. Oh. Oh. There's another something. Congratulations on finding the Bill Cipher statue, Bill's final resting place. Whosoever finds this treasure is hereby the new mayor of Gravity Falls. <laughs> so use your title well. Chances are you didn't do this alone. So share the wealth. Yes. You are an amazing fan, oh. Alex Hirsch. Yay! Oh my God. So many spoils. Threw the kitchen sink at it to hope that it would be a, a, a fun moment for the fans. And although uh, at official GF Mayor was the, the official uh, finder of the statue, apparently the chest was, was found by a person named Bradley before the hunt even began because some of the currency uh, was marked, I guess Bradley was here or something, and, <laughs> wow. and the USB drive in the the, the chest included a, a text document called Hi, which linked to Bradley's Twitter. <laughs> so Bradley, uh kind of a kind of a chaos entity here because <laughs> Who's like, oh I solved that oh oh Cypher Hunt? You guys are still doing Cypher Hunt? Do you guys want to know the story of Bradley? What's yes! the story oh of Bradley? Bradley? Regale us. Because it's never been told a regale before, but I'm Oh, I'm this is a to... Mystery Shack look back exclusive. Oh. The tale of Bradley. So you know, this whole thing is a collaboration, uh, but it, it's it's a dance between order and chaos, and it you is. have no idea what's going to happen. And believe it or not, Bill Cipher's statue was found months before we even launched the hunt. Oh my gosh! Really? Um, check this out. I believe it was Mystery of Gravity or, or Gravity Falls Cipher, our friend, mm-hmm. that mysterious fella who is un- aware of all things online, of who alerted me to the fact. Before we even started that someone had – basically what happened was this kid Bradley was just wandering around in the woods. He lives in Reedsport. As one he does. saw the Bill Cipher statue, never heard of Gravity Falls, had no context for it. The thing hadn't been launched. I don't even know if the show had ended yet at this point. And How did he, he know to dig up a USB well, stick? Well, he didn't. So here's the thing. He took a picture of it and he uploaded it again – Ages before this thing was even started, to a like Reddit, like Reddit unsolved mysteries, creepy pasta. So Bill wasn't even dead yet. Exactly, and he said, "Hey, I saw this thing in the woods. Does anyone know what this is?" And it was a blurry picture, and he didn't. Ha- he wasn't like a, a well-known redditor, and nobody even saw it. But somehow, oh if I remember wow. correctly, my friend Gravity Falls Cipher reached out to me and said, "Somebody found this thing." Um, and what I did is, as the voice of God, I. I was like, see if you can get a hold of this guy's email. <laughs> Kidnap and put him in a van. I emailed him. I said, hey, congratulations, Bradley. But finding this means that you, you've got a prize, but you have to take that picture off, to, off of Reddit immediately. It, it, take the picture off of Reddit, give me a call, and I'll explain. So, and make sure, make sure the USB stick is still there. <laughs> so he, he deleted the image off of Reddit. He called me. I just heard this kid's voice like, hey, what's up? This is Bradley. I was like, Bradley, I think it was like 2 a.m. when I was talking to him. I was like, Bradley? <laughs> Bradley, are you up? You have to meet me at the Twin Pines Mall. <laughs> Bradley, this is very important. And so I, I just said, I was like, Bradley, here's what's up. I've created this big fun treasure hunt and it's, it's part of a project for a television series. And actually, you, amazingly, you found it first. And, uh, I would love to send you. Um, some, some Gravity Falls goodies and a uh, hundred bucks. <laughs> and he's like, oh yeah, a hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay. I just have to delete the picture. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All you got to do is delete the picture. And he's like, but wait, so like everyone's going to be hunting for this. So Mystery Shack look back exclusive. <laughs> Cypher Hunt would not have panned out how it did if Alex Hirsch did not bribe a child yes. <laughs> that yes. he found on Reddit at two in the morning. In the dead of night, I bribed a child and I said like, I'll give you a hundred bucks. You delete the thing. And he's like, he's like, oh, but I'm the one who found it. Like is someone else going to get at the credit for finding it? I was like, Bradley, you could take credit for being the first one to find it after, after the thing has been located. And so Bradley took it upon himself to, and, and he's like, so what's what's there? What are people looking for? I'm like, oh, I've buried a little treasure chest. So Bradley came back, 
opened up the treasure chest, wrote down Bradley was here, reburied it, deleted it. I sent him a hundred bucks, but he made his, he managed to be part of Gravity Falls lore forever. But that's a, that's a podcast exclusive. No one has ever heard of this. That's amazing. amazing. Wow. The tale of Bradley. He just did that himself. He wrote that himself. He just (laughs) decided to to face. I'm imagining that one day Bradley will create a cartoon show of his own and Alex will just, you know, from working in that world to be exposed to it and be like, why does that name sound so familiar? It's Bradley. I will, I will try to spoil his uh, treasure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll get my hundred bucks back. Yeah, Alex was here. Bucks. <laughs> this, is, this podcast is all to say, uh, one, bring back mustard brushes, but two, this is uh, kind of a heist that we're doing. It's called, uh, it's called ben- Benjamin Heist. We're trying to get Alex's hundred dollars back yeah. from Bradley. <laughs> Just give me my cash, Bradley. <laughs> These cipher hunts don't come cheap. <laughs> so kudos to Bradley and kudos to the official Gravity Falls mayor and the, the family that found all these treasures. There's <laughs> there's a journal three in here. Awesome. It's like... <sighs> that's a dusty it's like, It's very dusty, but... Yeah. Oh, we got wonder a journal three. Wonder if it's that... I look smaller. You think yeah, it's I look cool. smaller. Oh, hey. oh, oh, this is new. Oh, oh, oh my god. Wait, wait. Let's, it's a let's, black white version. Let's check. What does that say? Stay paranoid. <laughs> Stay paranoid. This is directly from the wiki. The treasure chest contained a wide array of loot, such as plastic coins and gems, Russian and Japanese currency, a copy of Gravity Falls Journal 3 with special drawings by Alex, a black light, a plastic crown and uh, sash that says Mayor of Gravity Falls, a music box with Bill's eye that plays the Gravity Falls theme song and contains a slip of paper, a miniature Bill Cipher statue, a framed sketch of the main characters and the statue, and a USB drive. Some currency in the chest was marked by a person named Bradley. Yeah. The drawings in the copy of Journal 3 are caricatures of Seuss, Grunkle Stan, and Old Man McGucket, with Stan saying, Enjoy the nerd book, smarty pants! <laughs> and text reading from Grunkle Stan, Seuss, and McGucket, parenthetical Alex Hirsch. When investigated via blacklight, Bill's name is added to the signature. Bill hovers over Stan's shoulder, and Bill says, <laughs> Thank you, Bill. <laughs> when the slip of paper in the music box is investigated with a black light, a note from Alex Hirsch uh, can be found. So if I were to if I were to create uh, a story based on Cypher Hunt, it would be about Bradley rightfully reclaiming the title <laughs> of mayor, going going to hunt down at Mayor of Gravity. <laughs> At, at I official still, I GF think it, it falls within the bylaws of the cipher hunt because Bradley technically found the statue first, but did not go on the actual cipher hunt. So I think Bradley, mm, ah. Bradley is its own position. It's about those little details, you know. Yeah. yeah, there's two. There's two routes to solving the puzzle. One is the questing route, and one is like the sneaky uh, accept a bribe route. So the Grunkle Stan route and the Dipper route are the two options. Oh, you're, <laughs> you're so right. Of course, yeah. There's tracing your way through the maze and then there's drawing a line around the maze from the start to the exit. <laughs> he, he did the secret speed run but it, it didn't count for competition play. Exactly. Was- People say that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. I disagree. If you start at the ending point that's shorter. Yes. The shortest distance between two points is Bradley. Yes, a Bradley. Bradley. <laughs> that's what we're calling it now. That's Brad- That's Bradley's honor. Um, I love that because of the family that that went to dig up the treasure chest along with the mayor, included a baby. They also had the baby shake the Bill Cypher statue's hand. (laughs) I mean, there was a baby. You you couldn't ask for a more picture-perfect finale. Exactly. It was so adorable. Exactly. Uh, So when Bradley found it, had the... um had the seeds and the glue sprouted yet or was it still pristine um i believe it was still pretty pristine i I, the picture existed on reddit for a moment and then came down real fast um and (laughs) i just i saw months and months of work evaporating before my eyes because i was like you know this is going to spread online and it was just it was pure luck that he posted to a thread that people weren't looking at and nobody there was it just I we got there fast enough yeah. uh, because it, if we hadn't, the whole thing would have been over. Yeah, um, but and, we... and thank God, Bradley, you don't know me, but <laughs> you're my savior. Bradley, <laughs> the galaxy depends upon you. <laughs> so I do have I have uh, that copy of Journal Three. I guess was that the first copy that anyone owned, other than 
Uh, the statue was found on August 2nd. It came out July 26th, 2016. Our thought had been maybe whoever finds this will be the first person to get it, but it, it bled past it. August 2nd, uh, also the anniversary of uh, the season one finale airing, I believe. Oh! Was the Little Bill Cipher statue from Mystery of Gravity Falls, or was that before he started selling those? Oh, absolutely. Um, 100% from him. Yeah. My roommate stole mine, so I had I just ordered a new one from him like last week. Did your roommate hide it somewhere on the globe with a series of <laughs> devious clues? I wish that would have been so much more rewarding. No, they put it in their bedroom and didn't tell me. Oh, uh. I would have just given it straight to Bradley. Cut out the middleman. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's coming for it eventually. Just wait. Yeah, just yeah, just give it to him. What I was mean, the point in hiding oh, it? Oh, yo, we wait. all knew Bradley was going to find what it. What if for the for the sequel, Bradley is going to team up with? Sister Mary Hilda Miley <gasps> to ruin everyone's fun treasure hunt. Oh, <laughs> that's it! You can uh, ruin the fun by spoiling the ending, dear Bradley. <laughs> I'm, I I never thought that I would listen to somebody uh, basically live write fan fiction for the cipher hunt. And I'm well, there all about you go. It. <laughs> there you go. You're welcome. Um, it's a weird bad podcast, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> And I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way, Ellen. Can you talk a little about the actual uh, physical crafting of the Bill Cipher statue now that we've found it yes. here? Uh, yeah. So um, I had – it was created by this guy, Fawn Davis, who's got a company, Fawn Co. Uh, he makes props for movies and commercials. And uh, I had met him through a, a friend of a friend kind of in the sort of convention circuit because a lot of cosplayers, he would sometimes make swords and, and, and shields for them. And uh, wow. I – I reached out to him and I commissioned the statue and I, you know, I, I tried as best as I could to explain what this all was. And he said, it was clear that I, he, I had lost him, but he knew <laughs> what Gravity Falls was and the price was right and he wanted to help. So this thing was formed out of uh, plexiglass, um, uh, which is like the same stuff that they make a lot of like theme park rides out of. It's mm-hmm. like um, glass, but slightly more plexi it's it's much plexier i just want to establish for the record this statue is huge like it's almost as tall as a as a person it's as tall as most people i would imagine from the the space just below his eye to the tip of the hat it's wait i'm tall as most people it's true it's probably shorter than you but it's probably taller than me um and uh it it he covered it in like all this fake weathering and also put on glue with seeds in it with the idea that it would fast sprout real moss growing on top of it to try to look like it had been there for as long as possible. Um, Such a cool detail. uh, He got it. He hauled it in the back of his pickup truck and he drove all the way from LA to Reed's port, um, which is very remote. I I met him by flying to Portland and then taking a little tiny propeller plane and flying from there to Reed's port <laughs> and meeting him there on the Wait, day seriously? for us to all bury it together. You took a little yeah. tiny propeller plane? Wow. Got, got yourself in a launch pad and <laughs> launch pad yeah. Yeah, yeah. Situation. La- launch pad flew us. It was a, the whole thing was a bit of a duck blur. I can't remember it too well. <laughs> yeah. um, it was it was a wild adventure, um, and it was very fun. Um, and it was before the show had ended, so this was I I think I just called in sick um and <laughs> just appeared Seems for a reasonable. few days oh, to wow. accomplish this. So like um, Fawn then, kinda kinda knew what happened before any anyone else uh, who wasn't yeah, on the show. Fawn, crew. even before Bradley he knew about this statue. Well, um, I mean also nobody no, else did you did. give him like context for like, okay, so Bill and he he gets destroyed, or you were just like, Nope, I just want a stone statue of this guy. Uh <laughs> I, I sent him an nest. image of like the art, like this is what it's going to look like because we had already had the design of it at that point. Like, yeah. we want it to look as much like this as possible. Um, and he, you know, there's a there's a real there's a piece of like steel rebar in that arm. Like the thing is, it's well fortified uh, for for all occasions. Um, and, except the uh, hat. Except well, we'll something, get there. <laughs> something happened to the hat, but I'm not sure what. So, so I guess uh, after that, the the cipher hunt's over, right? Congratulations, we did it. Bill is preserved for <laughs> no all eternity. Insanity, oh, no more yeah. insanity. No more uh, planning. No more trying to like get in there and get it get to something before someone else does, huh? No. Oh wait, actually. Um. So that statue was found on August second, and on August third, what happened? <laughs> Bill Cipher was arrested. <laughs> wow. And to be fair, he has committed many crimes. <laughs> and, and like Al Capone, instead of being arrested for his like horrible, heinous acts against humanity, it was for a like s- slight uh, bureaucratic uh, misstep. <laughs> mm. um, so he, was it was it tax evasion? So what happened there? The woman who had told me, "Oh yeah, you know, uh, for a little, if I kick her some cash, she'll let me put this cockamamie treasure hunt on her property." She had some kind of like, I guess, Hatsfields McCoys thing with her neighbor, and there was a dispute about where the property line was. Now, 
you you use that phrase every time you you talk about this. Do you think your viewers know what Hatsfield and McCoy means? Old timey families who got into a long Crips and Bloods hillbilly style blood feud, oh, like a like a Montague and a Capulet. It's it's a property dispute that takes place in the backwoods and gets increasingly um, uh, ornery um, because I got the sense that. You know, she was certain that I had placed Bill on the right side of her line, but her neighbor was not. It turns out that when you mark uh, what is the acreage of a property, um, that's just you. Not everyone has to agree with every square <laughs> inch of that because, yeah. uh, pro- well, property's not real, but this isn't the podcast. For that. <laughs> and this is all in the middle of nowhere. Like the town of Reedsport is like like, like three churches, two football fields, uh, and like a like a bait and tackle store, and then like it's it's just the middle of nowhere. And a um, reed and just one sport. A single reed, a single <laughs> port, uh, two reeds and one port. Yes, um, two reeds, one port. I remember that video. Oh god, don't remind me. <laughs> I have been asked by Legendary Pictures if I would like to help them develop an outline for the Detective Pikachu movie. Oh, this was so. Then. I was in a skyscraper in Hollywood, like overlooking the Hollywood sign. Um, when I was in a meeting with an executive, shouting into a Bluetooth, um, and about Pokemon, <laughs> about Pokemon. When I got a, a, a text, or no, when I got an email saying. There's an issue with the cops. You have to call the report police immediately. Oh. And I said, oh, I got to go to the bathroom, guys. And I, I ran out of the office into the hallway. Was any of your drafts or ideas used in the final film? I never wrote a draft of Detective Pikachu. So I it was... was the bathroom that did you in, Alex. Was that... <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was there for a few weeks before I was starting another project um, that, I, I, that is under NDA. Um, and uh, I just, I like, here's a bunch of crazy Pikachu ideas, and I ate some of their free cheese samples. And I've never seen the movie, although I heard some of my ideas did make it into the film. Oh, wow. Um, oh, really? I, didn't, I, didn't, I never wrote a draft of the script or anything. Wow. How good um, was the cheese, though? Oh, my God. Their cheese spread was incredible. Um, Listen, you want to talk you want to talk cheese, it's gotta be Legendary Pictures cheese. <laughs> it was, Legendary Pictures cheese is the best cheese, but I was I was cough, choking that cheese out as I saw that I, I so I had to call, phone up the police <laughs> and, and I tried to explain, and they were very lovely. They're like, look, we, you know, we don't, I, I, with a mouthful, I was like, guys, I got some, in my mouth, <laughs> can I share this with you? Can, can you have some delicious cheese for me as a bribe? Um, they just said, they're just like, look, we don't, as, we don't care. Like, this isn't our property. You know, we, we don't even know who to find. We don't know what this is. Just, it's, 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 it's outside the police department. Somebody come pick it up and you don't have to worry about it. So I, I found, I found a Gravity Falls fan to pick up Bill and remove him from the Reedsport Police Department. As usual, the police have made everything a lot harder and less fun. <laughs> I mean, I thought it would just be there for all time, but I think, you know, given that it was a disputed property, it's good that it was moved out of there and that we didn't have generations of fans tromping through multiple backyards. There were a number of things that could have gone true. much worse. Yeah, Murphy's Law smiled like, on you. Like you could have got killed uh, immediately after entering Russia. Um, the police department could have demolished the statue. Uh, Bradley really... could have received that phone call, denied the the hundred dollars, been like, I'm going to keep it for myself. That's what Bradley sounds like now. I really love that they didn't care that they had an interdimensional fugitive in their midst. <laughs> well, they just com- let him he- they just let him slip through their fingers yeah. after all he's done. After all he's done. The statute of limitations ran out. You're right. I yeah. mean, they did also agree to just not talk about it after that. So I guess they didn't get <laughs> Never mind all that. They said. Never mind all That's that. That's right. Because they would have gotten tased if they'd talked Don't about it. Did you say statue of limitations? Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds about right. <laughs> That's a good one, dude. Apparently, initially it was in first after the police station. It was in Bicentennial Park in Reedsport, and then five more days later, it was at Confucian Hill, which is the perfect resting place. Uh, the hat, I think, was uh, like I think it was bent um, because it was fixed uh, ultimately, um, and and taken by fans and 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 crucified on a tree outside of uh, Confusion Hill, um, one of the original inspirations for the Mystery Shack, where it remains to this day, uh, glaring down on anyone who visits it. Um, which honestly, you couldn't have asked for a better final resting of place, course. a place that's an actual tourist trap and not some random lady's backyard. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's still there. So a- anybody who's uh, a-, a big enough nerd and fan to be listening to the end of this podcast, y- you can go. You can drive to Confusion Hill and you can take a selfie with the Bill himself I from think... the Cypher Hunt. I feel we should one day. Yeah, I think I think that there is also a geocache located underneath him so that you can, like, leave your, like, things and, like, 
exchange. I, it's the geocache way, but I do think that there's a geocache related to it as well. Yeah, so this was something incredibly sweet and brilliant that the fans came up with themselves. That This didn't come from any instruction from me. They decided that the treasure chest itself, which had been buried, they would leave at the gift shop, and it would be something that Gravity Falls fans could leave their own little curios and leave one and take one. Um, I love you know, that so much. That was like the spirit awesome. of, you know, when I said in my final message, you know, if you did this, I'm sure you didn't do it alone. Share the wealth. Yeah. They, community, baby. They took that and improvised and riffed on it and came up with this idea that it would be this sort of take a penny, leave a penny tray for just That's odd awesome. little talismans and totems. Um, I've, I haven't been there since it happened, but I, I love that idea and think it's, it's so in the spirit of the hunt. Um, so is the music box the box, the treasure chest, or was there a music box within it as well? Was it just like when you- There's a music box inside the treasure chest. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And does this music box take you to Amphibia? Uh, (laughs) you know, you're gonna have to interview, uh, another one of my friends for for answers to those questions. (laughs) No, you have to seal that treasure chest. (laughs) No, I do have a, I do have an end- Incredibly granular question for you. It's it's not important. Um, at the end of the unaired pilot released uh, as in conjunction with this event, uh, we see that the King of the Gnomes, as performed by Justin Roiland, uh, upon having his riddle solved, freezes into a stone and then a bird lands on his hand. Much like the same thing that happened to Bill Cipher. That, that is correct. Those it, two things do happen. Do you, was that a coincidence? Was that you accidentally writing that twice, several years apart? Um, I think that's a great uh, – probably yes. I, I think what that is is as the person who you know wrote and drew that storyboard so so many years ago, um, I think the bird lands on the, on the gnome's hand, if I remember correctly, just to like show that he's stoned. Like just yeah. to like to show Illustrate like the point. he's frozen yeah. and he's so frozen that if a fly or bird lands on him or or, or leaves fall on him that you see he remains stationary. Yeah. So react. I think that was just yeah. my sort of visual shorthand for that makes sense. this thing is stuck here and I probably just you know every now and then there's things in Gravity Falls where people say like oh my gosh Grunkle Stan said eeny meeny miny you and Bill said uh-huh. eeny miny you yep. eeny meeny miny you and I'm like oh no that's just me writing a jerk picking something and it's because they're both written by me it seems like some kind of uh, uh, it's like poetry dude they rhyme they, they rhyme <laughs> every all of the stanzas kind of we're vomiting in stanzas and you know I feel that Bradley is a much funnier character than we have. Wow, well, Bradley's the key to all of this. We can <laughs> get, get Bradley, Bradley working. working. Some things, there's a grand design, and other things, it's just, I'm drawing from the same yes. increasingly dry well up against yeah. many deadlines. And yeah. certain- Over the course of this podcast, we have realized that the fun of a lot of the fandom speculation is a lot. so many things have turned out to be important that people have stopped being able to tell the difference between yep. someone, something being meaningful and something not. And that's Which is fun. a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And and sometimes I don't want to get in there and mess it up. I want to be like, yeah, sure. Exactly. <laughs> Anything is possible. Except Tad Strange. You're going to be delighted to learn, Alex. As of this date, the Google image results for Tad Strange are only 50% <laughs> that monster. <laughs> <laughs> My God, yeah. I mean, the, you know, the the fun and and chaos of a fan community is it's a living story. Um, and once it's once it's alive, you know, regardless of whether you're its original parent or not, it it has its own. It has a life of its own. So when you see fan stuff, it's like your kid calling you from college and updating you. It's like, oh, I don't own Gravity Falls anymore, but that's what it's been up to. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's like seeing pictures on Facebook of what your kid is doing and you being like, well, that's that's them. <laughs> you know, I'm proud yeah. of them and I'm happy to see them exploring yeah. life and making mistakes and doing what they do. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm no longer their guardian. The fact that the Tad Strange thing happened made the punchline of him just liking bread so much funnier. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you accidentally punched up the joke. Enhanced the joke, <laughs> yeah, retroactively. Jason, can I ask, did, did did you witness the live periscoping of it being found? Like, were you were you there when it happened, or did you see it while it happened on, on, online? Yeah, I was there. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, no, I wasn't there. I, uh, were you there I, in the periscope where it happened? I was <laughs> periscope in, where it happened? I entered the periscope in my phone like Lawnmower Man. <laughs> and, uh, no, like I, Lawn uh, Gnome Man. <laughs> I saw yes. it, and... Uh, and when the when the music box started playing, I got such a like chill through my whole body. And it was also amazing because like we we talked about that one person had found it 
and they had they had waited. They like hadn't yes. done anything. Yes. They, they and that was part of the community thing because when the first when when people found out that someone had found it but hadn't posted, there was this like immediate like kill them. <laughs> like <laughs> what do you mean? What do you and, like when it turned out that they hadn't. Get their done anything bucks. because they were waiting for other people to join in the they, experience. They were waiting alone in the dark oh, in mean, the middle uh, of the, the woods. Mayor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mayor, the mayor. yeah. Oh, waiting, the mayor. Yeah. Oh. Waiting alone in the dark in the middle of the woods for other fans to find them and so that so that they were beautiful. they would not unearth that treasure until the uh, the rest of the fans And were that's there. why that's they so deserve amazing. the title of mayor. 100%. Absolutely. Holy crap. And there's a picture of them with their with their sash that we we can link that, that's they, awesome. that they posted. There is also a Tumblr post uh, titled Bill's Final Resting Place that gives a very detailed timeline of the aftermath of the discovery. Oh, awesome. Whew. So that was quite a quite a journey we all just went on quite together hunch, here. Really. Kind of a hunch, really. Kind of a hunch. I'm yes. Sorry to have wasted so much of your time, Alex and Jason. No, no, Consider it so payback fun. for the puzzle. No, no, no. It's 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 all right. It's cool that that I just like I said, I never thought that people would care the first time around, let alone a decade after the premiere, that there would still be um, that there would still be a t- attention and fan community. Um, and that was the perfect time for us to do this podcast. And I think it's really cool that you know I, I've only seen a little bit uh, of your podcast. Um, I, I like listened to a little bit of the episode with uh, Mike Rianda, um, but I think it's, if I understand correctly, sort of the thesis of your podcast is you're not just trying to chronicle the show, nor are you just trying to chronicle. The fan stuff, you're trying to co- chronicle the sort of confluence of the two, the unique experience that it was to watch yes. it as it was happening in a particular moment in time. Precisely. Wow, we should have we should have gotten you to write our bio and we started <laughs> yeah. this thing. That's better than any other way we've ever described it. That's the headline quote right there is the interaction between show and community. And what is so unique about this show specifically at this time specifically that I always say there's nothing like it had happened before, and I don't think anything like it will happen again. Nothing's happened since, yeah. Well, yeah. I see this comment over and over again on, on threads, whether it's a YouTube video or something I post on Twitter. Somebody says, oh, I love the show. I just discovered it this year with my family on, on Disney+. Plus. And then somebody underneath says, y- you'll never know what that was while it was airing. Like, there was an extra but thing. But with this podcast, hopefully they will. <laughs> <We're> yeah, <trying, Yes>. Alex. <laughs> If there is a history, there is a way to document it. And we have used uh, fan accounts from emails and the Wayback Machine to find fan theories of the time. That's why we call it an audio-based museum. It's basically just back in my day, the podcast. You (laughs) and kids have your Disney Plus. Back in my day, we watched it on cable and we waited months and we liked it. You guys seem to be pretty knowledgeable when when you were, when the, the chunk that I listened to um with with, with Rianda um you guys seem to like know your stuff although i do i do recall one or two instances where somebody was saying that's definitely a Matt Chapman joke about like a Rianda joke and i was like interesting interesting okay <laughs> well yeah no that's uh that's often I I got into this show because uh, Homestar was on hiatus and I'm like, well, what do I watch now? (laughs) So I would, uh, no one was, no one knew who Strong Bad was in the fandom. So actually I am single-handedly the author of the Matt Chapman Gravity Falls wiki (laughs) article. (laughs) Uh, Got it. I, I would often listen for what I recognized as voices from Homestar and cause he was never credited as a character other than Mermondo and several times was always in additional voices. Yeah. yeah but he's so I had to just place. do guesswork to keep up that wiki article. I don't know why I did that. Uh, it's an embarrassing thing to have done <laughs> and then one day have met strong bad. Uh, well, there well, you I, go. I, I I I think you were probably right about all the voices because he he has. I think I would recognize those two. He's got a very specific voice. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's it's difficult because I've never heard Matt's voice next to someone that wasn't Matt's voice. I've never had to listen for Matt's voice. Sure, I could be sure, like, sure, sure. Yeah, that's Missy. That's Mike. Maybe they got one of their friends to do that one. But generally, if a voice sounded normal, that meant it was Matt. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, we used him as much as we could, just because he's I is a modern day Mel Blanc. He's incredible. It's he's so he should good. be in more things. We're happy to have been listened to by the creator of Gravity Falls himself, and confirmed to have a ninety nine percent accuracy rate. And if you <laughs> want to find more episodes of this ninety nine percent accurate podcast, check us out over at pipedreampodcast dot com, where you can find links to our shows, social medias, Discord server, Patreon, also other shows 
like Escape from Vault Disney, How Did This Not Get Made, and Come On for Hookah Pod, a, a Homestar podcast, Runner podcast all about Oops. Homestar Runner. Uh, <laughs> I guess uh, we got it before you. Sorry. We didn't Wah, try da, da, to. Da, da, da. <laughs> Uh, patreon.com slash mystery shack is where you can support this podcast. $3 will get you a shout out at the end of episodes. $5 will get you into an exclusive Discord channel. $40 will get you either a voice acting commission from Charlie or an art commission from myself. Check out our merch store at crowdmade.com slash collection slash mystery shack. Look back. Thank you to Brian Brian for making the instrumental to our theme song. And thank you to Tsunami Holmes on Tumblr for the Stanford font we use in our thumbnails. And now we have a very relevant email sent to us at mystery shacklookback at gmail.com. This is from Taryn, and they write, Hi, Charlie and Ella. First of all, forgive the novel I have written in this email. You are forgiven. It is very much appreciated. Gravity Falls is my favorite show, and your podcast has reminded me of that love all over again. As you approach the end of the series, I wanted to contribute to this time capsule with some stories about my fandom experience with the show. I remember watching Gravity Falls when it first aired and loved it. I was 12 at the time, so the same age as Dipper and Mabel, and the perfect age to start finding all the jokes hilarious. After about six episodes or so aired, we got rid of Cable, and I never got to continue with the show. I didn't catch the codes or ciphers at all when I watched it as a 12-year-old, and it wasn't until I was maybe 14 that I had Cable again and tuned into a rerun that was on. When the theme song Cypher flashed, I stopped dead in my tracks, paused, and rewound the frames until the cipher appeared again. It was unlike anything I had ever experienced because I wasn't on social media and it felt like I had discovered it. I didn't know what any of it meant, but remember staring at it for a long time and wondering why that would be in a Disney Channel cartoon. At the start of becoming terminally online in 2013, I spent days after school on YouTube watching other people talk about the show and debunking conspiracies and theories about it. I didn't know what any of it meant and had very little context, but I loved that there were adults out there who loved the show like I did the few times I had seen it. I'd only seen a couple episodes here and there, and most of them were from early season one. I was completely unaware of the continuity of the series, to the point that I specifically remember seeing Time Traveler's Pig and thinking, now why would they give her a pet if they're not going to have it in the rest of the show? But one night when I was maybe 15, I turned it on and it happened to be the episode Not What He Seems. Now let me tell you, with little context and no expectations, what the fuck? Yeah. I was so confused. It single-handedly made me find the series, yar, and watch it all the way through. I binged the whole thing in, I think, two days? Well, almost all of it. And this was late 2015, and the Weird Mageddon Part 3 finale had not yet aired. By that point, I was on Tumblr and immediately rushed to find other people talking about this show. I became heavily entrenched in the fandom very quickly, right as it neared its peak. I got to be there for the finale with everyone else, I pre-ordered the DVD set and listened to every commentary track, including the secret ones. I bought the journal and spent hours decoding it myself before reading spoilers online, but most important of all, I was there for the cipher hunt, says Taryn. Now, I don't mean to exaggerate here, but I am fairly confident in describing the cipher hunt as something that consumed my life and soul. Sounds about in line with what we just talked about. I created a Twitter just to follow it, would have it up on my laptop along with Tumblr, then Periscope up on my phone. I refreshed the Cypher Hunt hashtag on Twitter and Tumblr quite literally every two to five minutes. And I was there on every single Periscope. I watched the entire thing unfold in real time, and to me it was so special because I felt like I had just missed out on being a part of the fandom of the show in real time but this was something I could be there for. I remember not coming out of my room except to grab food and was glued to my phone even when I was forced to leave the house. I went to a family gathering and couldn't even tell you who was there or what we did because all I could do was hyper-focus on the hunt. It killed me to be so close to so many of the clues in Southern California, but only be 16 and not have a way to participate. I remember begging my mom to go work on the bill puzzle when they moved it to the comic shop. I literally went to Disneyland and did not pay attention to being at Disneyland because we were so close to finding that goddamn yeah. Bill statue. In fact, I was in Tortilla Joe's in downtown Disney when that statue was found. If you may recall, very shortly after the hunt ended, there was a Gravity Falls art show at the Gallery Nucleus in Alhambra, and that was the moment I finally convinced my mother to let me participate. She drove up me and a friend who was a more casual fan of the show to the gallery, where we waited in a line outside for, I think, close to five hours. 
I got to sign the puzzle board, talk to Jason, Ariel, and, and even happened to be close when Alex made a very brief appearance and then immediately dashed back into a private room after the horde of a million screams rampaged the halls upon seeing his face. Later that year, I went as Ford for Halloween, then the very next year in 2017, I brought that cosplay to D23 with me, along with my friends who I had convinced to watch the show, dressed as Dipper and Mabel, for the Gravity Falls slash Star vs. the Forces of Evil panel. There, I bought the coloring book and got to meet and take photos with Alex and Rob Renzetti and Stephanie Ramirez. Because of the massive influence and hold the series had on my life in the summer of 2016, it still remains in a special place in my heart as my favorite show of all time. Since the only episodes I ever saw air live were the first episode and the finale, it always felt like I missed out on experiencing the fandom with the show. And I am so grateful to you both for creating this podcast to relive that experience and help fulfill my Gravity Falls fandom heart. Thank you both. All my love. P.S. Currently working on starting a YouTube channel of my own with plans for a long and detailed video that time capsules the Cypher Hunt experience in a very similar way that you're doing with this show. Awesome! Looking forward to you touching on the hunt during this podcast as well as we just did. All my love and gratitude, Taryn, and uh, they have attached a picture of their wonderful Stanford cosplay as well as a wonderful piece of fan art of Ford. Well, this is, like, one of the sweetest emails that I think we've ever gotten. Thank you so much, Taryn. That means, like, so, so, so much for us to hear, especially at this point in the podcast. I mean, you are one of our key audiences here, and I'm just very grateful that it has helped fill that Gravity Falls fandom-shaped hole in your heart. Thank you so much for writing. And if anyone else wants to send us an email, that's mysteryshacklookback at gmail.com. Well, folks, here to sing us out today with his very own rendition of My Hearts in Gravity Falls, the theme song that I wrote for this podcast, with a new instrumental by the great Cooper C. Spacito, it is my honor to introduce your friend and mine, Seuss Ramirez. Hi, I'm Seuss. Take it away, buddy. Let's do it. Take me back to the place I know with the mystery shack and the forest gnomes. I'm already packed, so come on, let's go. Don't get me started. My heart's in gravity falls. Dudes. Hey, it's Dipper Pines, and I'm here to read the Patreon shoutouts. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to be doing this by myself. Wiggity, wiggity, what's up, dude bros? Oh, I'm no. Dippy Fresh, no, and no, I no. came because I heard someone wanted me to read some names in a list. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Dippy Fresh, I, I, please. I can do this by myself, actually. Uh, so you, if you want to just go skateboard or do whatever you were doing before, I can I can do this all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Never going to happen. Let's get stickity started. Oh, stickity started. All right. Daddy Driftwood. <laughs> Friendly local geek. Daddy Buttons. Sterling Jubilation Axel. Fun Boringness. Hugh Salinas. Juno Series. David Gansel. Liz Clark. Rich Richard Scanland, what's up? Jamie Belts. <laughs> Your voice cracks, mine doesn't, because I'm better. Ryan Faber. <laughs> the crack is, is a feature, not a bug. Stephen Patrick Mulholland. G -g 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 Gwen Prime. J -j Junior Bruh. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say Junior Bruh. You don't have to do that. Junior Bruh. You're trying your best, bro. You got it. Joseph Jones. Oliver Pluto. Pity Piranha Plant. Elizabeth Neuenfeldt. Mumpleteen D. Wumpleteen? You're making that up. Vanilla and Zucker. No, I'm not. Ro Davis. Adam with two A's, a D and an M. Ha <laughs> I'm sliding into your DMs. Delphine D Ducey. Please don't slide into my DMs. May. May I slide into your DMs? Jesse Marie McDougal. <laughs> Absolutely not. B. Calisota. But what if I send you cool memes, Rich Wrong. No thanks to be fresh. This is the end of our interaction for the rest of all time. Samantha Angley. Easy snake oven. And Spencer Neil Campbell. Please get me out of this room with to be fresh immediately. Let's have a pizza party. I'm gonna slide into your DMs later. Love Dipper. you, Dipper. I don't love you. Please never slide into my DMs. I hope I never, ever, ever, ever see Let's you again. I thought you became worse. Let's have a pizza party. Let's have a pizza party. Let's have a pizza. Patreon.com/slash Mystery Share. Donate now. <laughs>